Rudy, can you get this woman to stop hovering over me? I mean, it's every day I come in here, and the, she's just hanging all over. What are you doing? There you go. The second I saw Brittany walk over there, I was like, oh, this is not going to be a good start to the day. No, <laughs> it's going to hit the wall big time. It's no question. Sorry, about it. I just had to flip your camera. You flipped my camera, See, man. Now i got to flip mine, and oh, then now when we look at each other, we'll be looking at each other. Yeah, that'll be good. See? See, you look at, oh, well, yeah, you're right. Why does yours flip again? No, I'm sorry. I keep making me, it looks like I'm looking to my left when I'm looking it to my right. It flipped it again. That's weird. Mm. Okay, so I look, so look at, to look at Brittany, I have to look at you on the camera. <laughs> yeah, no, I see what you mean now. It yeah, flipped I'm it at again. It, yeah. I wonder why that is. Weird. That's funny. That sounds like a Monty Python line. It flipped it again. It flipped it again, <laughs> Govna. Govna. Run away. I still, God, I love them to this day. You know, they got a thing called, Best of the best, I think it's called on uh, on one of the streaming services. Oh, I bet it's good. It's the best short little cut up bits from Monty Python. It's brilliant comedy. Those guys were so amazing. Mm -hmm. I still love that line when the king of the empire brings his son over to the window of the castle. He goes, "Someday, all this will be yours." And the kid goes, "Well, the curtains." <laughs> See, now, that's a brilliant line. I'm sorry, but that's funny. That is funny. Well, the curtains. <laughs> he's all upset. That's all he's getting. Yeah, right. <laughs> are the curtains to the house? Okay, so where were we? You were going to tell me something about something the news or some. Oh, Rudy told me exciting news. Oh yeah, you said Rudy's got exciting. What, what's the exciting news? Uh, well, uh, I'll be taking uh, a little road trip, uh, May 19th and May 20th. Be uh, down in Oklahoma City, four shows, Bricktown Comedy Club, opening for the one and only Adam Carolla. Oh, Adam, that's great. Yeah, Isn't Adam's that a great? great? Guy. Yeah, Adam is a really nice guy. Yeah, I'm such a fan. I've been such a fan for so long. I mean, the Man Show days. I mean, I was like 16 years old when the Man Show came out. It was girls jumping on trampolines. Obviously, this guy basically raised me on TV. You know, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, he's a great guy to work with. Uh, I just matter of fact, the only time I've been on stage with the guy was here at the Varsity Theater, mm -hmm. and I was so fascinated by the way this whole thing was set up. I just kept looking out at the audience. <laughs> Turn like, it around. You didn't talk anywhere near enough. I said, but I was just fascinated by looking out and watching people's faces reacting to Adam Carolla and his his staff, and I just I found it to be fascinating. That is so <clears throat> exciting. That's so cool. And Rudy, that is so exciting for you because I know he's no, just a great. huge fan, and you get to open for him. Yeah, thank um, you. You know, we had, and we get AJ, which is even more exciting. We get to oh, get Lou that's Rudy the best for a part day. Of this. Absolutely. Yeah, no. So that's May, May what? May 19th and 20th, four three, shows. About yep. three weeks mm -hmm. away. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And you're leaving Wednesday after the show? No, I'll leave Friday morning, like 7, like, like 4 a.m. Oh, four shows on two days. Yeah, right? two, yeah. So oh, he, here's okay. the thing. I didn't realize uh, no flights to Oklahoma City. There is one what? flight. There's one flight that leaves Minneapolis. It is... Uh, 6.45 p.m. on a Friday, and <laughs> the only return flight is Monday morning at, like, I don't know, it's like 8 a.m. So I just weird. thought, you know what, we're just going to have to drive it. Charter a private. You're welcome. Yes, of course. Why didn't I think of that? Obviously, thank you, Brittany, for your, what a problem solver you are. You're welcome. <laughs> well, it's one way, so it only should be about 50 grand. What's the, problem? <laughs> What's the big deal? Yeah. What's the big deal here? I have a friend that's done very, very well in his life. I mean, he's, he's, he had a business and just kicked ass, made a lot of money, retired young and all the rest of it. I said, why don't you have a private jet? Yeah. And he said, because every time I got on one, I would look at my money flying out the back end of it. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's true, man. Oh. That stuff's expensive. Oh, yeah. Ooh. When they break down, like, what it is, you're just like, I don't, in what world? In what world? Okay, I got to read this headline even before the weather because somebody's being a smart ass because they're all over this you know everybody being fired on television now and mm -hmm. blah 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 yep how about this headline though you ready for a great headline uh -huh. this is from i don't even know what news service it's from doesn't say but it's off a newser and it says there's a picture of don lemon he's staring at us doesn't look like he's happy or sad he's just kind of kind of there and the headline is insiders explain why CNN soured on lemon. Ah! Soured on lemon, get it? <laughs> I saw that. It made me happy to see that headline this sure. morning. Soured yeah. on lemon. He soured on lemon. Oh, has he? Okay. Yeah. Did you did you read that super sanctimonious uh, friggin' uh, that I don't know that statement he put out yesterday where it was like, no, if. 
I wish somebody in the higher ups would have at least had the decency to tell me face to face and not my agent. I don't know. Maybe they don't like you. And they don't want to make it awkward. Maybe you're kind of a dick and are hard to work with. So maybe that's what it is. Was that the one where they were like, they ended up tweeting out, CNN tweeted out too. They were like, yeah, we tried to have a meeting with you this morning and you didn't show up. Oh, I didn't see that part. But yeah, that that does totally 1000% fit the brand. (laughs) What's he going to do? Because nobody's going to hire him. There's no way anybody's going to hire that guy. What a pain they in the ass. They always land on their feet. It's always... I guess. No, I suppose you're right about that. There's no question. No, okay, very quickly. The best firing of you that ever happened. We'll start with Brittany. The best firing of me. Although you always quit. You're quitting because you quit. Probably. Yeah, I, I did get fired from Granite City. And it was funny because they were like, do you want to come in? And I was like, sure. And I was like, uh, so I went in and they're like, you're fired. And I was like, so annoyed that they just Whoops. didn't do it over the phone. I, why not? Like, why yeah. did you just make me drive in here? And then I was like, I had to do like a walk of shame. Sure. Out the, you know, oh, and yeah. everybody knew. And I'm like, bye. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. So she got fired. Were you, were you a server? Yeah, I was a server. I okay. can't even remember why. I was really, I probably didn't show up for a shift or something like that. Um, I like their chow. They have good food there. I love their food. Yeah. I love their French onion soup. Um, Excuse me. Yeah, I like their food, too. I still like their food. I don't even feel like I was mad at them when they fired me. I was just more annoyed yeah, that like, they had me come in. Like, right. I could have, we could have done this over the phone. Like, I am not high up. You could have just said, we're letting you. All right. Right, yeah. And I'm, I'm a thousand percent sure it was my fault. So, no hard feelings, Granite mm-hmm. City. <laughs> well, there, oh, I got to mention very quickly, because I was talking to Brittany about this. Both of us. And you can have all the cough buttons you want, but I, for the past several months, have to constantly clear my throat. What the hell is that? Uh, Why? Rudy's just so happy that we have a cough button now. Yeah, the, the, He's yeah but so it doesn't sick work. sick of me doing this. <laughs> Waving your hands. Help me. Help me. Help me. And it's like that, like, I would always wait to the last second, too, because I'd be like, I'm not going to cough. And you do that, like, body shake. Mm-hmm. And then I'd be like... <laughs> is that you coughing? <laughs> yeah, that's it was. Cough that's what it, I wish <laughs> it sounded that pretty at the time. True. And to this day, Gelfan will not. I mean, he's still mad at me. He's like, you brought in all of the diseases. Wait, but you have to tell us your best firing. Not yet. We got to get Rudy's. Oh yeah, first. yeah, Rudy's. Uh, well, the only time I was fired in radio was at ABC 93X when they got bought for, by Cumulus and they mass exodus. That one Halloween when they just basically let oh, everybody right. go, that was yeah. a part of that. Dave Hamilton sat in the office and cried as he did it. I was like, Dave, I feel so – because he was he literally fired that day like 37 people. I know, yeah. It was awful. He, I felt uh, so bad for the guy. I'm like, Ugh. the only time I've ever been fired was my grandfather. My grandpa fired me. Fired you? Fired you from the family business. Yep. And he did it in such a nice way. He, this is exactly what he did. He goes, you know, uh, he goes, I see, like, you know, every summer you've been out here, like, roofing with us and stuff. I think maybe you should try to, you know, go find something different to do. And I was like, I was like, oh, well, you know, like, why? Like, you know, you, like, am I, am I a performer? Is, like, is that wise? Like, yeah. I'm, I'm am a good so talented? Yeah. Am, I, am I a talented guy? He went, no, because you're a shitty roofer. <laughs> Well, there you go. I was like, thanks, Now, Grandpa. what makes you a bad roofer? Like, yeah. what was your technique or what? I couldn't do it. I couldn't. F- I was so bad with the hammer and, like, putting down. And nobody did it. Like, my family doesn't do it with nail guns. They do it by hand. Oh, my God. So, yeah, they do it old school way. And I just, I could not get it. Snapping sixes and the chalk lines and this and that. My brain does not work like that. I just went, you know what? I'm, I just, I'll just haul the shingles. That's what I do. There you go. Mm-hmm. Oh, exactly. that's a rough one. So fired by your grandfather, you got fired for not showing up for work, which Probably. you deserved. I, I thousand percent agree. Like, but I miss that discount. We used to get like eighty <laughs> percent off food no. there. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, food's there. They got good food, no doubt about it. Okay, so uh, WDGY, eleven thirty a.m. on your dial. I left. Uh, matter of fact, I left Hubbard to go work over there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's where I met a lot of people that I can't stand today, but there were a couple of decent people there, but I was there about a year, I guess, something like that. And I get called into the office. So I go into the office and I'm sitting there talking to the general manager and the program director and Hey, how's everything going? Oh, everything's great. Just, I'm glad you stopped in. And we just wanted to mention a couple of things that are coming up. Uh, we got the, you know, obviously the state fair is going to be at the end of the summer, but this summer we got to go to the Aquatennial Parade. And we do, so you and will you do all that stuff? I said, yeah, absolutely, not a problem. Yeah. 
He said, okay, well, that's it. I said, okay, well, I'm going to go back home, North Minneapolis, from 106th Street and 35W to North Minneapolis. Little traffic, so it took me about 35 minutes to get there and another 35 to get back. As I walked into my house, the phone was ringing. I picked it up, and they fired me. What? I don't, I'll, to this day, hmm. I don't understand. I was told, that was the first time I was ever told, that when I walked in the room, that one of them thought I knew what was coming and I was going to get really violent. So they were like, "Let's let's do this differently." How we what a weird mind game I of know. would Isn't you do that... all these? Do you think they thought you were going to say no to all those? I don't think so. I just think they were going to they were, they just made up a story. Okay. About why they wanted me to come in. So I they think like they pivoted. Wanted to fire me. They pivoted in a moment of panic because they're like, for some right. reason, they thought you were going to be unhinged. I got to tell these people something. I'm going to bring, I'm going to go back, and yeah. I'm going to go on tour with like two or three of the guys that I grew up with. You think I'm, I got a presence? These guys, you walk next to them, and if your hair doesn't stand on the back of your neck, you got a problem. Those are tough guys. Well, it's like Sonny Barger said. You never met a tough guy until you meet a tough guy. You're, <laughs> He's right about You're that. very right, um, but you're not dumb enough to punch somebody that w it would no. like ruin your life like that like no. like that's where i go no there's no way i mean that's that's like life ruining to freak out in an office like that i'll tell you guys the secret though you know how you've both been fired from radio jobs here's the secret yes. get paid so little that they actually forget yeah. you work for them yeah good because move. that's how i lasted at kq so that's why i quit so many times <laughs> yeah. Is like I knew they weren't gonna fire me. Like they couldn't pay anybody smaller amount to like, like water the plants at night as well as like run the you know do the station, mm -hmm. um, do the overnight. Like I was never scared of firings. I was like, I just get no. paid too little. You're welcome. There's well. your tip of the day. <laughs> I understand that. Yeah. Yeah. The problem is, like, radio pays so little, even in positions where you should be getting somewhat paid. Yeah. You know? Like, I remember the afternoon guy before me at 93X. I heard rumblings of his salary before they hired me, and I was like, I make an eighth of what is rumored that guy made. So, and it's, that's probably a little low from what they told me what that guy was making. Yeah. Think right. of the shoes I followed. I was, like, laughing. Like, people would be like, you must be. I'm like, Haha, no. 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 Well, that whole, those days are all over for radio anyway. Oh, gone, yeah, for There's sure. no money in that yeah. business anymore. Yep. My hope is just Hubbard forgets we exist and just, That's just what keep I'm going since yeah. we're in a different building. It's like office space where there's just a glitch in the system and you just keep getting paid. Yeah. For, they don't know why yeah, they thought you just, fired you. Yeah. When they all showed up here yesterday, I was like, oh, no, they know we're here. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. By the way, they put billboards up in the hallway i know i got sure. everybody out here going what the hell was that all about <laughs> no it was cute no i mean all ethan the other... ran towards it was very excited oh, ethan oh my god he was wound up yesterday mm -hmm. no he was question so sweet. ethan's the 37 year old sales guy yeah. yes that's exactly yeah. he was all excited running down the hall. Tom! <laughs> trying to get tom to pick him up <laughs> yes I'm gonna bring him into my arms no question i just got a text message from a friend saying tom great part of that story both those guys that called you on the phone are dead. <laughs> like, oh, that's Jeez. Nice. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, that was a few years ago. Let me mm -hmm. put it that way. I don't think they died young. Let me put it that <laughs> way. Yeah. You know, so that was not a problem here. But that's what I love about friends and listeners all just hopping on going, yeah, well, who gives a rat? Well, out? that person's dead. Go. <laughs> exactly. So who cares? Hey, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. I got, I got to read this again because of today. Warmer, a sunny start, increasing clouds, but it's going to be 58 degrees, thank God. Thursday, partial sun, a few showers with a high of 64. Some clouds, maybe a scattered shower on Friday with a high of 57. I mean, it, that's pretty damn good for the, the very end of April, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty good weather. Yeah. I would, I'll go with a pretty good weather. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I'm just kind of looking around at all the headlines, uh, what's in the, you know, general vicinity we only got a couple minutes here so it's a good time to bring this up <clears throat> i uh, as i said I'm, I'm i'm bouncing around trying to find a television news network that i can watch and so far i haven't found one and this morning it got even worse because i was bouncing around between four of them it was uh, um msnbc um newsmax fox and uh cnn 
Okay. I watched each one of them for about five minutes. You know what I learned this morning by watching four different networks? <clears throat> that apparently, and I guess this is true because they had video of it, so I'm assuming it's true, that the Russian foreign minister was talking about how sad he was that Tucker Carlson got fired. <laughs> Did you see that? I didn't see that, but it's very <laughs> funny. <laughs> what? Okay, so he's all upset, and they got a video of him talking about it in Russian, mm-hmm. so I don't really know what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. But they're claiming that he was all upset that, Ru- that Tucker got fired. And this guy, Morning Joe, on... Oh, Morning Joe, yeah. What the hell is that? Is it uh, HSN? Maybe t- I can't it's remember. one but, of those. Yeah, it's one of those. But yeah, one of those talking heads, round table, you know, yeah. So, folks, I'm just telling you up front, don't listen. To, I mean, you want to watch the shows and get some information. That's great. But do not believe a word these people say. They're all just in it for the money, trying to get their ratings up or trying to get Tucker's job or something. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. There's. I mean, it's all you can always trace the motivation back to how can they benefit financially. Uh, yes. Well, Morning Joe this morning, first time I ever watched it. What a nutcase that guy is. Holy Christ. The whole setup feels unhinged. Oh, Am I, I the agree. only one? Like, and again, like even if your politics don't line up or do line up, every time I've seen clips, it feels like it's just people like postulating in this very weird shaped couch. Yes. And you're like, this is un like these conversations just are weird. You know what he said this morning? Oh no. So we hear about this, you know, they played a little of that video I was just talking about the Russian foreign minister kind of whining that Tucker Carlson got fired. Mm-hmm. I think that's what he was saying anyway. That's what they told me he was saying. Yeah. Uh, then I hop over to Morning Joe. <clears throat> I never watched that before. Um, and he jumped right to that apparently Tucker Carlson was a Russian foreign agent, and that's why he got fired. Hmm. I'm like, what? Wow. Well, how would I even? Res- like, okay, let's what? imagine. Let's imagine we're sitting with our little, gen- you know, our, our coffee cups, and we're sitting there, and you know, they're morning Joe. They're supposed to kind of do like light, right? Whatever, that would and be nice. And somebody yeah. drops that bomb. I'd be like. Oh. <laughs> now we're also having a segment about almond milk alternatives. Like, yeah, I don't even know. Where would you go from there? Where do you go from there? Uh, yeah. Gulp? Okay. okay. Look, mm-hmm. I got no special interest in Tucker Carlson or Morning Joe or any of these people, but you got to stop with the psych. I mean, you're psych. Your brain's coming apart at the seams. That's yeah. all I'm saying. When you're a Russian spy, you know what you do to stay incognito? You get yourself one of the most famous yes. shows on television sure. and stay that way for a decade. That's how you do it. What a great idea. Mm-hmm. I just, why do they do that to their viewers? Why? I mean, he went on and on about how horrible it is. That, and then he said that Tucker was was extremely anti-cop, which I, I don't know because I didn't watch enough of him to know that. I kind of have a hard time believing the top-rated guy on Fox was anti-cop. Yeah. Do they just make up whatever they want to say and They're like, throw it's time it to cut t- It's literally succession. They're like, now how can we get away? After we cut ties and make the sacrificial lamb, how do we all prove I never liked him? Oh, yeah. Oh, here's, that's a big deal. Here's the most extreme version of that. <laughs> Russian spy. So, like, when you eventually get fired, <laughs> I just Again, can't I wait. Will, yes. I can't wait to hear what me and Rudy say about you. Like... Absolutely. I, I think Tom was a Russian spy. That's how it happened. Canadian spy. Mm-hmm. Ooh, what yeah. a twist. <laughs> I'm just going to go with headlines. Okay. I'm just, there's five headlines right across here. So when I leave, you have to say that Tom is a Russian spy. He also is tran, uh, trans. He's yep. also black. He doesn't drink Bud Light anymore. And or drinks it all the time, or, or drinks both. It all the time, or, <laughs> or both. never touched it and has touched it. I could just take the headlines on my screen right now, put them together, and make a great story about everything that I did wrong and deserve to be fired. Um, I have the gift that you're going to give us Uh-oh. when you get uh, either quit or get fired. This woman did. I post it in our Tom's news stories. This woman who quit her job uh, sent out these candles that say "Sorry for your loss." To all of her coworkers, <laughs> about herself, about herself with I a picture like of that. her on there, like, <laughs> hey, and I'm like, that is everything. I got no problem with that at all. I think that's wonderful. I know, actually. like that. We sh- you guys will have to send out condolences cards, candles, S- uh, candles. Yeah, make some candles for me when they finally do fire me. None. This time. 
So, yeah, I mean, uh, as far as news headlines, I know we got to hit, hit the bricks here in a, a second, but it's pretty much negative, 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 negative. Then this is negative, and that's really negative. Uh, here's another negative rape case. Uh, Singapore man executes man over two and a half pounds a pot. There's not a whole lot of good news this morning here no. as I'm looking at the national headlines. Uh, you got Sanders is not going to challenge Biden for the nomination. So they, uh, I don't know, whoever thought he would. Did you yeah. ever think he would? No. 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 Not at all. No. But it's like one of those like fun news things you throw in there. They were like yeah, really out true. of things to say. I think you're right. They got nothing to talk about, so they just make stuff up as they go along. And again, I, let me say very quickly that if you watch these other shows longer, the Foxes, the CNNs, the uh, Morning Joe, MSNBC, I think he's on. I didn't watch it for very long, so if they talked about other things and explained this or that, I don't know that. It's just I'm, I was on my way out the door. I figured I'd check four different uh, stations to see what they're talking about, and they're all pretty much insane. Well, we appreciate it because me and Rudy definitely are not going to start watching news for oh, you don't. at 5 a.m. Do so. not do it. Mm. It'll so do, if, it's if anyone's going to have to do it, you're the one <clears throat> can raise your blood pressure. And I don't even do that anymore because it's so over the top. I'm, I don't even get happy or sad about it. It's mm -hmm. just so way over the top now. Um, do you feel nothing inside? Because that's alarming as well. That's not good. That's not good either. I did bring my saber with me today. Oh, good. Yeah. You know. Now, it'll be, I, I guess it'll all work. The only thing I would say, the sadness in this for me, yeah. is that news agencies across the board think that we're morons and will believe anything. Oh, yeah. They really do think that, that we're all really stupid. Oh, yeah. Okay, whatever. And, like, when the emails come out, when they're like, our listeners are idiots, like, you, uh, you I mean, that's all going to come out. Like, that's all. That's I what's, guess, yeah. yeah. And it's everywhere, so. It is, you're right. Ladies and gentlemen, sunny and 32 right now. It's going to be a pretty, pretty decent, I mean, the next few, there might be some sprinkles, but no downpours, 58. 64, and then 57 over the next three days. We'll take that. Like I said, 32 and sunny right now. We'll be right back a couple minutes more. Tom Bernard Show. Don't tell me how to do it. I know how to tune in. No, you don't. No, I don't. You're absolutely right about that. I just lied. There Download the app and you can listen live. What the hell is wrong I'm with working you? on a jingle. Well, I like it. We need jingles. Remember jingles? Yeah, they still exist, right? I think so. Yeah, there's a few out there. My, uh, you know when you can tell jingles are uh, transcending when kids sing them all the time. Oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, my daughter was out of nowhere. She'll just go four eight eight two three hundred Empire. Oh yeah, yeah. Empire. <laughs> God, who was it that uh, I had a friend that was working at the time Northwest Airlines, <laughs> and he said, "I don't know if I can stay at this job any longer." I said, "Why not?" Because it was a huge airline at the yeah, time. Yeah. So it's a great job. He goes. I don't know how the hell he does it, but every day a guy calls me on a, from a different number, and I answer, and he starts singing me the Northwest Airlines jingle, oh, and then he hangs up. Oh, my. <laughs> on, that would break me as a person. Well, I know. It's like, really? In my head, sometimes when I get really excited, I'll just go, seeking justice for the injured. And by the way, don't get pissed at me. It used to be the name of the airline, so don't be, oh, that's... Uh, racist and horrible. No, it was n the name of the airline at the time because the jingle kind of went, Northwest Orient Airlines. <laughs> he kept it's majestic. <laughs> oh, side note, speaking of people calling you a monster. Um, oh, well, this ought to be fun. Well, if, now this is a 40-minute segment of calling you a monster. No, Angela, one of our listeners, wrote in. That uh, she thinks you uh, accidentally lied yesterday. I accidentally lied? This is her email. So today, 525, which was yesterday, Tom said he'd never been to a brewery. Indeed, he has. Oh, I have? I met him at the Rock Bottom Brewery, downtown Minneapolis, what seems like 100 years ago. I believe it was a KQ event. Pass was there as well. Just wanted to clarify, as I know you love to correct him, Laughing yes, face. you do. Okay, well, they gotta. I gotta ask you something. Yeah. The the brewery wasn't there. It's just they served. They didn't make the beer on site, did they? I think they do at Rock Bottom. They, they do, but to your credit, Tom, it does not seem like a brewery. It's a it's, no. It's more of a restaurant. Technically, yes. <laughs> Granite yeah. City is a brewery as well. Yeah. They make their own. What is? Yeah. 
Granite it's City. Granite City Brewery, yeah. and it's they make it really? there. Yeah, like we had to take when we got when again. I don't know why I'm talking about Granite City so much today. It was a very short lived career, but we had to like take a tour of the brewery and like learn about the hops. And I remember being like so bored. Yeah, probably why I got fired. I was not into. <laughs> they're like, what kind of beer? I'm like, I don't know. Whatever has the most alcohol, I would take there you that go. one. I but like um, it. yeah. So Angela has joined the crew of just enjoying correcting you. So. Thank you, Angela. I, I, and I, seriously, I did not know it was a brewery. I, I knew it was called Rock yeah. Bottom Brewery, but I never thought that. You can brew beer downtown Minneapolis in some little space? Yeah, they have. I think they I have like could do that. big windows that you can see the giant oh, you can? metal I distillery all, things. I thought that was cosmetic. I really, I thought it was a, that, to look like a brewery. You, you are a thousand percent correct. It's more like a T. It's, it's like a TGI Fridays with just like vats of you know yeah. brew in the back. Yeah, it's yeah. a great place. Like, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't. It's seem... not. That you're, well, it's not like like Rudy's cool and trendy, and he like goes to like the Northeast Brewery yeah. that has like the cute names. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um. So I get what you guys are saying. Yeah. But I have a question for you. Was her name again the woman? Angela. Uh I just found this out, and I it doesn't surprise me. I guess Angela is a Russian spy. I and therefore it felt like that. Like I felt like I should have taken, like, not responded to her email. And yes, so I'm sure exactly. I'll get an email at yeah. some point from Hubbard. But yeah. Uh, do you guys want to hear the 1970 Northwest Orient radio commercial? Uh, yeah, Here we, we do. Is, is, no, 1970, I wouldn't have been on it because I voiced their commercials for like two years, but not 1970. Okay, yeah, this is the only one that I could find, but oh, yeah, Tom, you were not kidding. Here you go. <laughs> Northwest Orient. If you're planning a trip to Seattle or Portland, so you have to okay, yeah, yeah, them. yeah. Well, but wow, you weren't kidding. I, I no. never heard that before. But to nope. have the gong in the background, not great. Get the gong in there. <laughs> not great. Don't love that. Story and gong <laughs> airlines. It is so pretty though. No, that's Sing songy. Very, very well sung. There's no mm-hmm. doubt about it. But yeah, that was a whole different era back then, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Words were used. Smoking mm-hmm. on planes. Who came up with, or, now the Orient is supposed to be all of Asia, is that correct? Well, who came up with the Orient? Why'd they call it the Orient? I don't know. Was that an American deal? Just they had to have a name for it or something? Because obviously they didn't call themselves that, otherwise they wouldn't be offended by it. I have no idea. I have no idea the origin of that name in any aspect. I don't, I don't either. I got no idea. Uh, the only thing I'm seeing here is that this is late Middle English. It's an old French word, uh, Latin from the rising east, is what they say. So, yeah, you're right. So it must just encompass all of Asia. Well, wouldn't right? that be a compliment if it's the rising east? That's a good thing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, you would think. I don't hmm. understand people. Like, don't ever say anything to me because I hate you. What? Yeah, look, I, you don't like the word orient. I don't use the word orient. That's the well, well oriented. That's a different thing. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I, I don't. I guess people find negative stuff. Like if somebody calls me a honky, I don't care. What the hell do I care? Yeah, and the, we like to do it behind your back. Bohunk, you know that um, kind of thing. Although my wife is, is that haughty? A bohunk? No, no, it's a bohemian. But what's a something hunk? That's like, like a some. There's a word that is something. I thought Bohunk meant like a, an attractive guy. Well, he's bohemian guy. All right, maybe. Catherine's bohemian, but she's not a guy. No, she's not. It all works out in the end. By the way, I'd like to thank all the people that came over here from uh, Hubbard Broadcasting yesterday. We had a little gathering. What, about maybe 25, 30 people, something like that? Mm-hmm. It was so fun. And I would like to point out, uh, I want to thank all the people that came up to me and said, why the hell did your wife marry you? So thank you very much. I know. We had a talk in here, and I was like, are you sure? Yeah, there you Still? go. Thank you. See, there you go. 42 years, man. That's all I'm going to have to say to you. People are jumping on the bandwagon. Aaron emailed us, and he is also saying he believes that you did a broadcast uh, at a brewery in Nashville, too. Was that a brewery? <laughs> See, I'm sorry, but I don't feel it. I guess that's probably true, isn't, isn't it? Isn't that funny? I just think it's funny because it's like a total, unte- you know, it's just people are like, side note, here's Tom, how Tom is also okay. wrong. Well, let me put it this way. When I... If I would go to a brewery, it would be to drink beer. Yeah, yeah. But I don't drink, I know. so that's why I didn't notice that you of could drink. Of course, you didn't, and of course, right? and I'm just being silly because it's. I, the no, listeners I think it's great. Are actually. Like, actually, in 1989, he stopped at a bathroom yeah. and uh, 
Tom's a moron. That's yeah. all. We've learned today that Tom is a moron. Yeah. yeah. Today we learned, yeah. It was only just today. today. Just popped up today. Ladies and gentlemen, now to talk some sense into all of you, here's Kristen Burt, KB2, as we call her. Good morning. I'm being attacked mercilessly on the that air today. That is not anything new. It really isn't. I just... Now, Kristen, I got to ask you this. You got to straighten this out for me. Have you watched the news this morning? I have not watched the news. You're I've read the news human. on my phone, but not watched it. You're a lucky person because apparently this morning Joe guy on MSNBC, I only watched for like about a minute and a half, so maybe, maybe I missed something. But he was basically on there claiming the reason that Tucker Carlson got fired is because he's a Russian foreign agent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? what? That's what it is. I think it's okay. the 90 recordings that his ex-producer has on him with potentially some damning evidence. I think that's one of the reasons he got fired. Against Tucker? Evidence of what? Well, um, if you, and this is going back to the Dominion lawsuit. Oh, um, okay. And, it, you know, talking a lot about um, him saying one thing behind the scenes in terms of saying, like, I don't believe that um, the election was you know, fixed or anything else like that. And then going on the air and saying, oh my God, the election was stolen. And also working behind the scenes with some key Trump uh, aides and things like that saying, how, what can we do? What, how can we like fix this narrative? So there were things going on that sort of played into all of this. Do you know any nationalist people who don't lie? (laughs) Seriously, on the local news, they don't lie, but on the national, all I hear are lies on the national news. Yeah, I mean, and, and, you know, that's the one thing I, I keep saying, like, focus in on your local papers, your local yeah, broadcast, yeah. because they are giving you the heartbeat of what is happening in your community. And if we lose these, we lose examples of the truth. And I, I think that's the, the big concern, because, you know, on a national level, you're looking for ratings. It's really about it's dollars driven right, right. and it's everyone has to outdo each other and especially in the era of Donald Trump, and I, I think I said this on The Family yesterday, I just said whether you were for or whether you were against him, everyone leaned into the Donald Trump narrative because mm-hmm. it created chaos, but it also created a lot of advertising dollars because people were watching. Oh, oh, yeah, lots of money was made on that deal. Yeah, so I just, again, I don't have a dog in this fight. I've, I've talked to Tucker Carlson on the phone a couple times on when I was at the queue. Never met him in person. I don't know him. Or I, so I'm not trying to defend anybody, but to go from this to this to this, that's a, that's a big leap going all the way from the biggest guy. Wasn't, didn't he have the biggest show on any of the network or Yeah, and, and on services? Monday night, his first night off the air, Fox News, although it still won the night, they did see a huge drop in ratings. Yeah. So they're going to have to find another superstar to replace him. And but Fox News knows how to develop their talent to reach that level. So I'm not concerned about that. Um, but I do hope we see a shift on both sides. And I'm not just yeah, pointing I agree. this at Fox. I hope we see a shift in how we report the news and delivering just the facts and letting people to decide for themselves. Because I don't know where critical thinking went out the window and people just want to be told like what you should think, because that that's crazy. You should be able to form your own opinion. <laughs> no, I agree completely. I, I really wish the national news would stop lying to people because this morning I watched four different channels for a couple of minutes each, and basically they were lying, all of them. They just were, I guess at minimum, they were stretching the truth. I, I guess that's a good way to put it, right? So yeah, and so it's up to us to be more proactive on how we're getting and digesting yeah, our news. And I yeah. think that's what's really important. And I have this discussion with my dad all the time because he's a Fox News watcher. I'm like, and a couple times he's even sent me photos. And, I, and he was like, this is Los Angeles. I can't believe you live here. And I went and did just a Google search. I'm like, dad, this is Paris. This Fox told you that this was a photo of Los Angeles and it's a photo of Paris. Because I looked at it. I'm like, this doesn't look like... Why a, would they do know, that? I don't... They wanted to make a point about the homeless issue. I'm like, you can make oh, a point of the homeless issue with the photo of Los Angeles and not making it Paris. But I knew that God. wasn't our geography. And I said, you have to be really careful about what you're reading and digesting. And I'm telling him this as a journalist. <laughs> I am very cautious. But look, if I'm watching the deal and I'm supposed to be uh, looking at... Uh, New York or whatever, and maybe the Eiffel Tower shouldn't be in there. Yeah, 
<laughs> you're, yeah, I, I right. get what you're saying. They do it in a sneaky way where they go. Oh, like, do they? Well, they go like the homelessness in Los Angeles is is through the roof and it's catastrophic. And they just show pictures of homeless people. No. Like B-roll. Yeah, in the worst situations possible. And then yeah. if somebody were to come back and go, hey, this isn't Los Angeles, they go, well, we know it's not Los Angeles. We, we never that. said it was Los Angeles. We didn't label it. We, didn't, we just said this is a picture of a homeless person. So yes, it's a very sneaky backdoor way that they get it done. That's terrible. Yeah, and that's a really good way, Rudy, you're pointing out like how they just slightly you know alter your your reality and yeah. don't buy into that so just be really cautious i just tell people like just go to the news sources that are non-biased just hand you the facts and then you decide how you feel about that situation you know what i'm going to do is i'm going to call in the news site and go that's not saint paul that's minneapolis <laughs> yeah you see what i mean or dad maybe come visit your daughter in los angeles and see it for yourself yeah there you go there yeah. you have and it. it was so funny because i'm like this is a tent community by the Sen, Dad, it is not. <laughs> like, we don't have the Sen here. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I, it, it, will anybody ever calm down? Relax. They can lie to you. The more you get worked up, the easier it is to lie to you. I hope you understand that. Do you think people do understand that? No. no. Uh, I mean, just Jesus. No, but I, I, but this is why I'm hoping like things like this, like whether it is, you know, Don Lemon getting fired for some, a totally different reason, but you're kind of seeing like how he's treating his coworkers behind the scenes. Cause people are like, Democrats are all like equality and blah, blah, blah. Well, you know what, guess what? You can be on a left leaning network and still be misogynistic. <laughs> you can be part of yeah. the LGBT community and still be misogynistic. And, you know, and then you have Tucker Carlson of how they're stretching the truth, like exposing these things just shows you that there's a lot of cookie like hands in the cookie jar like sort of manipulating the news and how we're digesting it and how we're absorbing it and how they're telling you how to feel so i gotta tell you one good thing that did happen this morning we did get a good line out of this whole thing this morning there's a new site called newser n-e-w-s-e-r mm -hmm. it's a pretty you know left-leaning deal so they don't really they don't really pounce on people though on there maybe they do but i just don't see it but i they seem to be pretty even keel to me right and they had the best headline of maybe the month the entire month of april this morning you ready I'm ready the headline why cnn soured on lemon ah <laughs> what do you think <laughs> now that's a great yeah there you thank you very much the How about beat. CNN squeezes lemon? Squeezes them out. There you go. Oh, you're getting the, the rim shot, too, so that's good. <laughs> I'm like, I have to write headlines for a living sometimes, so. Do you think <laughs> many, do you think many, many people listen to this show because they know you're not lying to them about the news? <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to I deliver know. accurate news. And it's also why I like to, especially when it comes to entertainment, telling everyone what goes on behind the scenes. Like, yeah. this, you know, this is what's happening. But guess what? This is like how PR works or this is how right. celebrities call the paparazzi and create and craft their narrative if they're in a scandal. You should know that. So instead of just saying, well, I saw this happen. Well, guess what? There was a publicist that talked to People magazine and was quoted as a source. Or, you know, we're seeing things like, especially with like the Scandaval and Vanderpump rules, we're seeing that play out. You see them like talking randomly to a photographer. I'm like, paparazzi are not hanging out in Van Nuys, California people. They called them to meet them at a certain place so that they can get their side of the story out. I got to ask you a question. And I couldn't wait to talk to you this morning because I saw the, the promo for it this morning while I was watching all these news stations. People are still interviewing Kim Kardashian. Yes. What the hell could she possibly add to anything? I am so excited you brought this up because I kind of had it at a topic a few weeks ago and I kind of forgot yeah, about it. Right. The Kardashians right now, and and Kris Jenner is is Kim Kardashian's mom. A lot of people know who she is, right. but she's considered the momager, the person who has crafted their entire storyline and made them billionaires. And I think what's interesting is that they are seeing a major drop in their relevancy. Oh, and I can see that. Yep. The Kardashians are starting to panic a little bit, and. This is going to sound really weird, but if over the weekend, Sophia Richie, that is Lionel Richie's daughter, got married and had this beautiful wedding that was covered by Vogue and people got so excited. TikTok was going nuts. 
on the same at around the same time, Hulu dropped the episode where Courtney Kardashian, which is the oldest Kardashian daughter, um, getting married to Travis Barker, and nobody cared about it. Oh. Even though it happened months ago, um, in normal times, like if you go back even like two or three years, people would have been fixated or hyper fixated on Courtney Kardashian's wedding. Right, right. Instead, we've moved on to the next generation of influencers. Done. And I think yeah. that's why you're probably going to see Kim being interviewed quite a bit lately. And she's talking about in these interviews, I think I want to pivot to a full-time lawyer. Will she? Probably not. No. But that is the headline that they want to get across that, look at, I'm serious and I'm focused about my career. I'm not just a woman who poses in her skims, undergarments on Instagram. You know, it's so bad, though, that a guy like me, I don't know anything about the Kardashians other than they're filthy pigs whose father helped a guy get away with double murder. But, you know, other than that, that's a really nice family. I I just, the second that I saw the promo, I went, they must be in big trouble because why would anybody give a rat's ass about what Kim Kardashian has to say? Who cares? It's true. Their relevancy is going down. It's gone. And I I think that they're they're in a panic because they see it happening. They see their engagement dropping. They're seeing some of their sales probably dropping, all the businesses that they have. And it's been a long era for this, and especially for females, they have influenced fashion and beauty culture, oftentimes in a derogatory way where where women have been changing the shape of their body and their face to emulate the Kardashians. And I hope we step out of this era and into a more natural era. It's fine if you want to do Botox and everything else, but trying to create yourself into someone who you aren't to look like a beauty ideal for billionaires who are spending lots of money on their on their care of their body and their face, right. it's not healthy. All right. Just more great news for all of us. That's all I'm I have to sorry. say, KB, too. And I know you guys interviewed Vicki Lawrence yesterday, which was amazing, but everyone Sweetheart. don't forget the Carol Burnett special is tonight on NBC. Magnet. We had Pat Boone and Vicki Lawrence on in the same uh, seven-day period. I mean, true icons. That's incredible. Uh, no question about it. Thank you, my dear. We'll talk to you soon. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Have I known her long enough to call her my dear? Of course. Well, that, some guys, some people get upset by that now. Um, it's a me, compliment. I mean, my dear is a lot better than a lot of things. You, my dear's fine. It's cute. It's fine. And also, your guys' relationship. 11 years. Yeah, it's like, you can tell, you can say my dear, and I think if she didn't like it, she'd tell you. I think oh, she's the type. Why don't I do this? Listen to you, strumpet. <laughs> what do you think of that? Should I go that route? Yes, yes. Victorian age slurs. I yes, love it. Yes, exactly. Man, we got the timing down now. You nailed it. I like it. Did you pee in a bucket in the hallway? No, I made it all the way to the middle. One thing, uh, the layout of the whole deal, if I thought it through, I would have moved further down the hall because we couldn't be further than the, from the, the men's and women's room. Well, that's not mm-hmm. true. Women's is not that far away. No, the women's you is not. You guys got right. around the corner. Yeah, so I should have gotten one closer to the, to the head, as they say. I say we put a, we've got a third room. We put a bucket in there. It's our emergency bathroom. That's Tent City in there. Have you never noticed? The yeah, tent but don't in there? you think Tent City would wouldn't mind to have a little bathroom corner? By the way, this Tent City uh, has got restrictions. You cannot be over six years old. Well, that's weird because I've definitely thought about taking a nap there, so I feel <laughs> attacked. A shock. shock of the century. I want to get you guys take on this whole uh, Minnesota House passes recreational marijuana bill and vote a seventy-one to fifty-nine. What does this mean? Do you guys know what this means, or should we get an expert on about it? Oh, I, let's I don't get an get expert. It. Who would be an expert on hitting the pipe? Well, okay, I always think any lawyer. I think <laughs> Michael Bryant, but I don't know if he. I'll text him. And I don't see think he hits the pipe. Yeah, I say I got a lot of friends, some relatives, <laughs> a, lot, a lot of people I know that could probably be experts on hitting the pipe. Like yeah. the jail room lawyers type of like, I can tell you how much you can hold and how whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that's because right. I don't. Does this mean there are going to be stores now like there are everywhere in other states? Yes. So you will have dispensaries, absolutely. The dispensaries, and you don't need a permit or any of that stuff anymore. Walk right in. You got a valid 21 and older license. You're good to go. So what are they going to do with all these medical marijuana outlets? Well, that is the other thing I was wondering about because I know Bachman's, you yeah. Know, yeah, Bachman's yep. had a, a deal with the state that they were going to grow it. And that had lasted for, I don't know, must have been the last four or five years now. Right. So who knows what's going to happen with that? Unless they become a supplier, 
Yeah. Like maybe they yeah. have a thing that they become a supplier and they help regulate it. And they may even have a thing where I'm not sure exactly how it works, but hey, if you are going to sell marijuana in the state of Minnesota, it has to be grown in the state of Minnesota. You can't have it some from oh, somewhere really? else. So maybe that's part of it. I'm not sure. And then on top of it, I wonder, because I does insurance cover anything in that? So if they want to go the insurance route. I don't know. They might want to go the med, you know medical marijuana route because then they'll at least they'll cover it. But yeah, they probably will have to keep them both. Then won't they? Yeah, mm-hmm. I would think in some yeah, some, some of them at least. Yeah. Is there anybody that you really like in the Minnesota House that you want me to check and see if they voted the right way or not? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I thought, do was there anybody I like in the Minnesota House is laughable? I, I don't know. Minute. I don't care. Uh, hi. What's the program director's name again here, uh, Hubbard? Are you talking about uh, Dan Seaman? No. no. Well, no, he's above the program. Oh, oh, oh program director. Big show. Oh, Amy Daniels? Amy Daniels. I just ran down the list. says right here, Daniels voted no. Oh, <laughs> I knew there was something about her. What a prude. She's not I knew chill. It. Narc. She's not chill at all. She's not chill. She's not sending out chill vibes. Well, that, that kind of sucks, though, that they only put the last name, so they just assume it was you that voted. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't. I don't know a whole lot of people in our Minnesota house. I really don't know many of these people. <laughs> I just go with whoever is from my hometown. And yeah, I, if yeah. I, Listen, if you voted, however you voted, that's who I'm going to be usually behind. There you have it. So here's how it, the whole thing shapes up. The Minnesota House on Tuesday passed a 300-page bill that would allow adults 21 and older to buy, sell, and use marijuana. Joining nearly two dozen other states that have legalized the cannabis plant for recreational use. God, it's half the United States now, huh? Mm-hmm. I did not know it was that many, many spots. Uh, it passed Tuesday afternoon, 71 to 59 vote, with two Republicans joining all but one Democrat in supporting the proposal. Um, lawmakers started debating it Monday night before adjourning and resuming discussion the next day. Minnesotans deserve the freedom and the respect to make their own decisions about cannabis use. Our current laws have failed, said Representative Zach Stevenson, a DFLer from Coon Rapids, who is the bill's author. Thanks, Uncle Uncle Zach. Thanks, Zachy. <laughs> Zachy. We should get him on. Should we get him on? Zach attack. We could have a Zach attack. Exactly right. We try to track him down. Uh, the proposal would create a new state office of cannabis management, uh, tasked with oversight. Minnesotans looking to cash in on the new business would apply for state licenses to grow, manufacture, or sell marijuana dispensaries. At dispensaries, of course. It allows a person to keep one and a half pound. <laughs> You brought this up yesterday, Rudy. Uh, one and a half pounds of flour. Why the hell would you need that much flour? I have no idea. That's, yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. I mean, it's like a suitcase, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, oh, it's a lot. Yeah. Jesus. Well, God bless you. While the flour in their homes grew up to eight plants and have two ounces in a public place, two ounces also, that's a hell of a lot. Yeah. People don't realize two ounces of pot is a lot of pot. Is it? It yeah. doesn't have any weight. Yeah, we, oh, yeah. T- we talked about it yesterday. It's about a Ziploc bag. Like, oh, yeah, like yeah, yeah, Busting yeah. at the seams is like yep. two ounces of weed. Yep. Yeah. It's true. Uh, let me see. It's a rather interesting story. The legislation, which is the culmination of hours of testimony and 16 committee hearings, would also automatically expunge low-level cannabis convictions and set up an expungement board to consider felony offenses. It's a move that supports, uh, supporters say reflects a core goal of the bill, righting the wrongs of Canada's pro- a prohibition that is disproportionately... They had to do it. Uh-oh. Disproportionately harm people of color. Can they prove that? I mean, I think so. How would they prove that? I mean, I think that there's, there's numbers to that one, right? i got to be honest with you, and I'm going to ask Tevin when he comes in later on today, because yeah. he's such a brilliant man. If I were a person of color right now, I'd be getting really sick of everybody using my skin color. I really would be sick of it. Yeah. Because they're only doing it so you'll vote for them. Yeah, no. That's the only reason they're doing it. I mean, I agree with you, like, when we talk about it some of the times, but I would think that if they're saying that more people have been arrested for these, like, small amounts of possession in black communities than white communities, then that one doesn't seem as crazy Do you think that's true? Probably, yeah. See, I don't know anything about busted. Who the hell's the last? When's the last time you heard somebody getting busted for cannabis? But that's the thing. Like, if it's a decision that is made on like a human level, right? Like the officer right. has discretion. Yeah. It's like one of those things where I'm sure, and not necessarily on purpose, there's an accidental like bias for even checking for it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sure 
I'm, sh- you know what I mean. I, it could even be a slight one or whatever, but I'm sure that in small amounts, it's happened more in black communities than white communities. See, I'm not so sure of that. Maybe it has. I'm not saying. Yeah, it yeah, hasn't. yeah. I could go either way with it. I, I mean, don't, I, I don't if it's a numbers it. thing, this one wouldn't be that hard to prove. But I, I get what you're saying. I, I normally, I mean, a lot of times it happens. I go, I agree. But this one, I think you could probably just look at numbers. You think it's because of the growing up in the north? So I never ever saw anybody get busted for having cannabis back in the 1960s. Even yeah, nobody cared. No, nah, well, DUIs they used to just bring you home. Yeah, they did. Yeah. How right. funny is yeah. that? Which well, is not a good idea. Not a good idea, but no. then they realized, like, we can start making money off of this, and then that's when people started getting in trouble for it. Absolutely. Well, it a lot of people, you know, if you were somebody like me who still likes to believe that, like, that one was hopefully people die from it, you know, mm-hmm. like, that's a safety. But I'm sure it's more jaded than that. I'm sure it's exactly what you're saying. Um, not many people die from smoking weed. Like, not, there's just not... It's not going to happen as much. Like you said, the Cheech and Chung joke about the car going too fast Phenomenal. is a good example. We were you parked, should say man. it. Yeah, we were parked, man. <laughs> that is terrific. I, like I said, we'll get through the whole deal once. Yeah. A, but I, I got to be honest with you. I would not care for being brought. Stop bringing my skin color up yeah. just so you can make money off it or get votes from it. Totally. I, I would not care for that at all. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Matter of fact, from now on, whenever anybody comes on the show, I'm going to, like when Tevin comes in today. Oh, God. What are you going to say to Tevin's him? here. You know, he's a person of color. I'm going to just throw that out there. Right. You know, I'm going get to that, get, get that cooking. What do you think? I think that it is an interesting way you're going to present him. <laughs> Tomorrow. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mike Gelfand, the liberal Jew. I just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to label everybody. What do you think? And I'm that white slut. And white <laughs> slut. I don't know about the slutty part, but hey. No, we just we decided that when any anybody comes on the show, we're going to label them by their skin color, their religion. We're going to tell you all about them, mm-hmm. just to make sure that you're not deeply offended by you know, listeners aren't deeply offended by some scumbag we have on the show, right? I yeah, it's it'll be an interesting way we're going to live. Yes, indeed. But I am. I really, honestly, God, I'm sick to death. Stop begging for votes but you're right yeah god it's disgusting it's embarrassing yeah i would i'd go with embarrassing no question about it so yeah uh, w- uh this story goes on and on and on and talks about people who are for it people who are against it, all the rest of it does anybody know when this will start when these first dispensaries will be opening uh, i don't think that well the bill passes now but i think august 1st is usually when all the new oh, legislation yeah. goes into effect yep. so yeah so we're doing, we're talking May, June, July. You got you got a hundred day, hundred and five days, let's say, mm-hmm. and they will be open by then. I imagine, yeah, probably yeah. at least some sort of rickety version of them, but yeah, they'll get going. Yeah, I mean, I, to tell you the truth, and it, isn't it kind of weird because you know, there was some concern about that because when I quit drinking, and you know, that's something maybe Brittany can talk about as well. Um, I didn't want to take any sleep medications anymore, or any of that stuff, but. I started using cannabis to yeah. go to sleep, and it works like a charm. Why don't I? Why am I not over the top? Well, but I was told by the people at these the, the, the clinic and all stuff. I said, Tom, you're not an alcoholic. You just when you drink, you're a psychopath. That's all it was, you know. <laughs> so, see, people have asked, well, how can you do cannabis if you you can't drink? But there's a big difference. I don't get aggressive when I take cannabis. What I did when I used to drink alcohol. You know, and it's so funny. So, like, I formally went to rehab, and I'm one of those, like, you know, people that will fall in the line of I'm an alcoholic, fine with it, love that, great, whatever. It's been over 10 years of me not drinking. It's the right game plan for me. Right. And so I am some in that world where, um, you know, if I go to meetings, and there are, there are two extreme kind of views on this. There are some... Uh, people in the addiction community that will say, if you take anything, you are relapsing. You are whatever. And then there's the other side, like me, it's like, do you? Do whatever works. Like, you don't need to put yourself in any sort of, if you want to take an edible, okay. If you, whatever. If you want to, you know, and there are people too where they won't even take pain meds. Oh yeah, I do For (laughs) things like that they need them for because they're like, I won't do anything. And again, to live by anybody else's rules, whatever works you for you. Can't, you absolutely. can't. You need, if you want to sleep and take that, whatever. And if you want to, 
There's so many people that have weird hang-ups on what other people do. Like, there are people that will straight up tell oh, you that you are, you are, yeah. So it's just do whatever you need to do. That's what I, I think that's really good advice. Not everybody's the same. Well, I'm not like you. You're not like me. Calm down. Yeah, absolutely. That's fair, isn't it? Yeah. Let me know when Rob's ready to go, if you would, sir. Oh, he's ready. Oh, he is? Okay, yep. excellent. Rob Yang, how you doing, Rob? I'm good. How are you? Well, now I'm really good now that you're here, Buster. Let me put it that way. <laughs> right? I was uh, enjoying this conversation that was going on. Yeah, I just, again, I just, everybody would calm down. Rob, can you get everybody to calm down for us? What do you think? You know, I, 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 do, my, I do what I can. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll wear turtlenecks. I'll do anything to just kind of take it down a little bit. Turtlenecks. Are those easy to find in Hollywood? You know, um, I, don't, I, haven't, I haven't seen all too many, um, although I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if uh, they'd come out at, uh, at, at the hottest day of the year mm-hmm. out here. Now, Rob, could you, can be a little bit odd. Could you get to work and get on some like popular shows? I mean, Succession, Rabbit Hole with Kiefer Sutherland. Can't you get on a popular show, Rob? That's magnificent that you've done oh. done this. It, uh, those are great shows, as a matter of fact, both of them. Oh, thank you. Um, I guess I guess uh, I'm just on them. At it, uh, it's, uh, but that's the good news. They, they asked me to show up. So. <laughs> that works. Rob is known for his role as Lawrence Yee on Succession and as Logan Kim on The Resident. Yang has also appeared in numerous television shows and films, including The Americans, Living With Yourself, and Twisted. So tell us, uh, uh, and by the way, I also uh, tip of the cap to Kiefer Sutherland. I always like the things that he does as well. But if you could tell us a bit about Rabbit Hole for people. I, I really think it's terrific. So I'd like to maybe have you talk to people about your take on the show. Uh, yeah, Rabbit Hole is uh, it's it's an espionage thriller uh, starring Keeper Sutherland, and uh, you know we're, it's it started airing this last month, so we're it's an eight episode series, and we're I think six just came out on Sunday, um, but it's uh, it's it's following just a, a world where you question what reality is and. Uh, Keeper Sutherland's character, he plays this guy named John Weir, who uh, very much is questioning uh, what what reality is as as he goes about the show. Um, I play this guy named Edward Hum, and he's, he's uh, just an unassuming treasury investigator who gets uh, swept up into all of this mess. Rob, let me ask you a question about that, because... Look, I've never been an actor. I've never lived in Hollywood and the rest of it. Um, has American have, have American shows, streaming shows, and all the rest of it, have they kind of followed the European lead where everything is now four, six, eight, maybe ten episodes? Uh, are you in favor? I mean, obviously, I guess my number one question would be, do you make less money if you're an actor because there's only eight episodes rather than, like, 21 like there used to be? Well, you know, it, it's uh, the the benefit of that is that you get to work on more things, right? Um, so, so it's not like you know being on one show because it's so many episodes that uh, your quote unquote hiatus from the show is is so short that maybe you could fit a movie, but it's got to time in perfectly for that. Um, so, I, I I I think I I mean I I prefer it. I like working sure. Um, on, on these these shows that are more serial like uh, you know I, I I remember back when uh, 24 first came out on box set mm-hmm. uh, with Kiefer Sutherland I remember binging the hell out of that and so I'm, I'm I, I like watching these these shows that are strung together as opposed to um, um, you know episodics where it's just uh, contained episodes I like watching it. Yeah, I do too. I agree with you. We're going from the beginning to the end, so it's yeah. That's um, as as far as the money goes. I, I guess that's uh, everyone gets paid a different amount. Um, right. You know, I, I make a, a lot less than Kiefer. I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> so I understand. Nobody's that. paying me. You know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. 
Hey, I, it's a, it's great. I think it's magnificent. I, I love this descriptor in Rabbit Hole. Nothing is what it seems when John Weir, a master of deception in the world of corporate espionage, is framed for murder by powerful forces with the ability to influence and control populations. How close to the truth do they get with some of these things now, Rob? It seems to me as I'm watching series now, like I said, four, six, eight shows, whatever it is, we're getting closer and closer to how things really are instead. Yeah, there's a fantasy element to it, no question. But there's also a lot of reality behind shows like yours, don't you think? Absolutely. I mean, I don't think there's anything in this. You know, as far as uh, you know, information and data and what, what corporations uh, and, and uh, you know, organizations collect on us, you know, it's just, it's scary how much information is out there. And, and this show definitely, it's, it's a reality, the, the backdrop of this show. Um, and it just, you know, in a dramatic form, just, just shows how, you know, you can, you can be manipulated, but that's, I think it's really relevant. Um, you know, I, I, I haven't done one of those, you know, genealogy things, uh, that everybody does those 23 and me stuff. Yeah, right. Uh, just because I, you know, I'm like, well, that information's out there. <laughs> oh, God, I, I don't um, think there's any question. Yeah. Um, so I, I, yeah, so I, I, I think, I think this, this uh, show, uh, what the, the uh, deception and, and being manipulated by media, I think it's very relevant, and and it also touches upon like. You know what's what people in the media say is true or not. Like what oh. you know, what is considered the truth now? Um, you know, we we had so much uh, outright lying. You know, um, and nobody apologizes. You know, you just I think that's right. You know, there's, there's there's like this new rule of just just don't apologize. <laughs> you can make it through. Don't don't apologize. But you know, maybe things are changing now. But it's certainly been like that. Well, it's, um, it is amazing, Rob, that you got information, you have disinformation, and then you have outright lies. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 pretty shocking. But uh, I don't know about you, but it, it doesn't doesn't shock me anymore. No, no, no. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Well, I will tell you this, Rob. I know you got to go right now. With too too short of an interview, but Rob Yang, ladies and gentlemen. Rabbit Hole with Kiefer Sutherland. Watch it. I've, uh, I've seen a couple episodes. It's a terrific show. And, like, I, I think it's a good thing when, when Hollywood steps up or wherever, you know, they're doing the production and, and really kind of informs people, look, most of what we're doing here really does happen. Not all of it, but most of it actually does. So, Rob, thank you for your time this morning, sir. Thank you. And he's gone. Yeah, I heard him cut him <laughs> off right in the middle of that whole yeah. deal. He was very, very pleasant. Didn't yeah, you think? yeah. Very pleasant. I'm a little sleepy in Hollywood right now. So, but yeah. you know, yeah, it's still only 6 a.m. over in Hollywood. Did you just spill your coffee no, into your purse? No, it's fine. Okay. okay. Oh, don't worry about it. It did go right worry. in your purse, didn't it? <laughs> don't worry about it. You want us to take like a half hour break so you can hose down the room or anything? No, don't worry about it. Yeah, that is a good show, by the way, and I, I do like Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland. Um, but but it is true you got you got information, you have disinformation, and then you have flat out right out lies, and we really lean in heavily on the flat out lies mm-hmm. now, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why we have to do that, but apparently it's very very important to get it done. I, it's whatever. Oh, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. What Damn were you it. supposed to do? I was like I said when when Tevin comes on. By the way. Tevin is a man of color. Stop. I'm going to say when he comes in. I should have said, Rob Yang, he's Asian, you know. Oh, stop. I'm going to start doing it. Why not? I'm because trying to get people to vote for me. it's the weirdest. Uh, no, it's not. I'm getting people to vote for me just like the politicians are doing. Um, I'm we, protecting the people of color. While Steve is protecting our show, he just said an idea for the show. How about Dr. Mirman, Mirman from oh, Life Dr. Medical? Mirman, yeah. yeah, he, he uh, would know about cannabis. Do you want me to try to reach out to him? Yeah, okay. well, matter of fact, I have his number if you want it. Oh, well, that just well, makes he's the guy, easy. No, he's the guy who got me on uh, on the legal cannabis anyway. Oh, yeah. No, he's very good. But he's a Russian, 
So does that make me a Russian spy? I don't know. I make terrible life choices. I just spilt a whole cup of coffee in my purse, mm -hmm. so... I'm a Russian spy! I know you are. Did you really spill a whole cup of coffee in your purse? It's like a cup and a half. It's a pretty yeah. big container. You're a disaster. It's fine. It's just... I don't, I'm, I'm just looking for it. I don't know if I have Dr. Mer, uh, Merman or how I, how I have him in here. Oh, you know what? I think it's in the M's because I think I put it under his last name. No worries. We can do it out during the No, next... no. We're we'll doing do, it right now. No, I'm break. hard at work. I'm well, hard at work. The one nice thing is that today when we get this show up on YouTube and then we pull these for, you know, clips for all the social medias, that'll be the first clip that we put out <laughs> is Brittany dumping her entire cup oh, of yeah. coffee into oh, her absolutely. purse. That'll be the first thing <laughs> that goes up today. So make sure you follow the Tom Bernard Show uh, on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. <laughs> it's fine. It's you fine. are kind of a pain in the ass with all your, all your misdoings, I misgivings. Cannot. Disaster. It looks like you're texting during the show, by the way. I'm not texting. I'm just looking for where I put it. I have way too Give many Give me your people. phone. I can search no, no, things. No, no, I got it. I got it. Uh, there it is right there. You see that? I'll the get the number. Of the J's? Yep. Yep. There he is right there. I thought I had it under doctor, the clinic, or whatever, but it's under Jacob. I got it. I'll take care of this. J Don't Jacob is, yeah, and I'm sure he'd love to come on. I, he'd probably like to pop on. Through this entire transition, I would imagine, talking about that. Sure, yeah. If you can shoot me his number, Britt, I'll drop my line real quick. Sounds good. I'm going to send his contact to you and I. You and me. Just shut up. I just <laughs> built a whole container of coffee in my <laughs> favorite purse. And here I am. Is it leaking? I don't. Just leave me alone. No, I'm going to look and see if you got a puddle over there. Just for don't. What do, I, what do you want me to do about it? It'd be in less of a disaster. I cannot. I cannot. I can. I cannot. Was that the roommate? What was the name of that? The room? Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that guy. We've had him on. We had him on the queue a couple of times. Uh, I love that movie, by the way. It's a great movie. I oh. love it. I agree mm -hmm. with you. It's it's horrible and great at the same time. It's so good. Which I love. There's no question about it. So, yeah, we're going to find out uh, from, uh, hopefully we can get a hold of Dr. Merman, because he's a real, I, I've known him for years. Great yeah. guy. I got my... Uh, my okay from him. He was the doctor that did the exam on me and said, yeah, you're nuts. You should get on this. Yeah, I, I feel like that was probably a quick appointment. Yeah, it was about 30 seconds was all it was. Tom, you're out of your mind. Get on some geef and you're good to go. He's like, don't even walk in the room. We're good. You can go yes, ahead. Yes, that's exactly right. I take it to sleep, ladies and gentlemen, because I used to have to take, well, Again, when I got up at 3.34 in the morning for 37 years, yeah. try sleeping. It does not work. You never adjust to the fact that you should be going to bed at 7 o'clock at night or something, right? No, no. Your body you is don't. just, yeah. You've been doing, you did that for so long, too. What time do you wake up now naturally, like on the weekend? Uh, today I woke up at 5.36. Blech. That's actually not that bad. No, 5.36 is a hell of a lot better than 3.36, I'll tell yeah. you that. A and on the weekend, better. what do you wake up at the same time? No, but like 8 o'clock. Nice. I do. It's wonderful. But the thing about it is, I still have to adjust to this whole thing because driving in today, it felt like it was about noon. I know. Because the sun's up in the sky, so I have to put the visor down. I haven't driven in, in I've mentioned this several times, but I've not driven to work when it's light out for 37 years. There's so many times it's I have a weird. Little, little moment of panic. Because I'll be like, wait, am I supposed to be there by now? Like, right. Like, right. I don't know how many times. <laughs> and, like, I, I get confused. All of a sudden, I'll be sitting there slowly, like, eating in the dark. And then I'm like, wait, should I be out of the house? But, like, wait, it's almost 6. Should I be gone? Like, I, I ugh, know. Ugh. I know. Well, then you asked me not to come in early, so now I just said, okay. Okay, I'll just... first off, I never yes, asked you did. that. You did I asked too. you. You're I... a liar. I asked you if we could sit quietly. No. While we're in here so I can read stories for your show. With your namesake on it. So basically what you're saying is... I hate you is what you hear. Is you, you hear. hate me. Yep. Yes, that's exact. Trust me, I, I talked to your wife about this. By the way, they get here yesterday, and there were, what, like I said, about 30 people in the studios here. Yeah. All the people for the sales. Bernie was here, and I love working with Bernie, too. He's so lovely. He's the head of sales. Yeah. And just a really good guy. Some salespeople showed up. Um, we had a nice, nice talk about this, but... Blending in the family, because you guys, well, Rudy, I don't think you ever met anybody from my family other than Andy, did you? Yeah, yesterday was the first time I really met Catherine, but yeah, Alex is about the only, Alex and Andy for sure. Yeah, so it was nice to just bring them in and, you know, although 
you two gushing over one another, Brittany. We my don't daughter gush over each other. We just yes, you do. We, oh God! Here's it's the thing, you guys. I am a full blown spaz person. Yes, you are. I just have to when I connect with my other spazzes is when our spazzes come out. Like I got. We just all of a sudden, like, we're the worst. Nobody wants to be around us, but that's fine because we thrive with each other. There you ha- You do thrive. You guys, see, that's one thing I could be very honest with you. Now I'm being honest, not a smart ass. But it's so great to see my daughter just, she loves you. I you know. know that. Well, yeah, I, lo- I love her. We and her have so much in common. All of a sudden, we're talking about the size of children's clothes, and Rudy <laughs> wants to kill himself. <laughs> it's fine. We're, like, intrigued. So, like, is he a 2T now? Is he a little... It's, like, so funny. But you you know when you... You have those people, right, that, like, you just meet and you go, like, we are on the same frequency. Like... Yeah. And you just... It's just easy. Like, I can... Alex and I could go to the DMV and I'd have a blast, you know? So did you do that for the segue? Matter of fact, one of the people I think of all the time is Chris Eggert, who's up right after this. That's exactly what I did. Okay, good. And we are back, ladies. 821, now 21 minutes after 8 o'clock, KQRS. i got to check the uh, weather because it's supposed to warm up into the higher 50s today, which is good. Uh, right now it's 37. So it jumped from 30 to 32 to 37. Should be a uh, high today. It's looking pretty good, about 57 and sunny, they're saying. So that's good, Chris, don't you think? Yeah, it's great. Yesterday was uh, oddly nice, yet the breeze was pretty cold. We yeah, the breeze was. Mm-hmm. Yep. We were at a track meet last night, and like for a minute you were hot, and then 30 seconds later you were cold. If you got in a little bit of shade, and then the wind was blowing. But I could ask you an off, off-the-cuff question here, because I saw something on TV yesterday. And this poor son of a bitch, I don't know how, uh, what happened or who didn't set him up properly, but he, he was sitting in a wheelchair, and, and uh, his left leg was cut off below the knee, yeah. right? So they gave him these this stretchable bands. They're like six inches deep and six feet long or whatever, and he was supposed to exercise his leg with this. So you put it under your leg, and you pull up on it. Uh, yeah. You use your leg yeah. and all that. Right, you, so you don't. Yeah, I am not joking when I say uh, the whole six feet of that thing was stretched out fully. It flipped off the bottom of his leg, hit him right in the face. My God, that must have hurt. Oh. I was like, oh, holy crap. Did, oh. did you have to do any of that stuff? Did you ever well, get, I mean, you get hit in the face, did you? No, but I, we got those bands laying around. We got yeah. athletes in our house. So like there's, those bands are laying around in about every room, um, <laughs> stupid, stretchy things. Yeah. And I, I get, I like, they, in, in fact, they make me angry now because whenever I see one, I associate it with like pain or physical therapy. Sure. Yeah. So sure. I like, and I'll like in a rage, throw them away because I don't want them around anymore, which is stupid because then Buy next more. time somebody gets hurt, they're probably charging me for another one of the dumb things. What were, what were you watching? Um, God, I can't remember what the name of the show. Uh, let me think about. It. I, I I gotta come up with it. Can't think of it. Watching the amputee channel again. Yes, the amputee channel. Um, we're gonna cut you off right here. Thank you very much. Great to be. <laughs> huh? What do you uh, think of that hey-o. slogan? The amputee channel. We're Ooh, cutting you the, off. That's the kind of comedy that we're. That's what we're all here for. Yes, you. that's exactly right. It's just way over the top and really, actually hilarious. I, I yeah. wanted to say something. I'm it's, I'm really enjoying the cameras during the commercial break, so I can see you guys scurrying about to go off to d- handle your business uh, in between the commercials. And um, Tom, I'm very jealous that when I was in the studio on Monday, you didn't offer me one of your special cherry drinks. <laughs> You're more than well. Well, first of all, Brittany drinks them all. So oh, she's yeah, up there. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. I, if I had some, I would have. But not only uh, not only do I. <clears throat> But also, when I have a friend come in, my friend Shannon drank one. Oh, yeah, Shannon, too. Yeah, she goes and drank one, too. Don't worry about me. Help yourself. I'm running low, but, uh, yeah, don't worry about that. That's, yeah, that's it's weird. Oh, no. Did you do it again? Jesus, pal. You me, did it again. It's a psychopath. Are you kidding me, Brittany? Ah! What did she do? Did, this is the second time in, like, 12 minutes she's dumped her no, coffee. you shut off my screen. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I cannot see any. Oh, there, we're back now. Thank you. Oh that God. is unbelievable. <laughs> Good God. 
Oh. I keep spilling my coffee, Chris. And I put it in my purse, on my purse, on this chair. I don't know what's wrong with me. We, we got to get this video stream going out on uh, the podcast it, so yes. people can. Is, that needs. To, we need to get the, our best people on that to make that start happening. Uh, yeah. What just happened there was gold. It's it's going out today. Yes, you will see it up today. Oh, it yeah, I'll make sure that we get you in there for sure. You guys, Chris, what's yeah. crazy is I feel so so smart today two days in a row i've had eight hours of sleep so i feel like a genius but like obviously mm -hmm. that's not something's not clicking something's not is this genius thing a comparative issue yeah okay <laughs> this is from baseline <laughs> my from version of genius baseline. my wow, version Tom, of you, you're throwing out the hate today my man you're, I, no no hate i adore this woman you know that <laughs> oh i feel comfortable with our relationship as is don't yeah don't go yeah, change don't, oh god don't change because that only means i'm getting phony and behind <laughs> yeah, your I back if I, ever, I don't need that oh. no, i don't need that i was just talking about this chris my daughter and and Brittany are really good friends they love one another and just been friends forever and my daughter showed up because we had a meet. The Hubbards all came over yesterday. Everybody in management from Hubbard came over yesterday to say congratulations on the show and blah blah nice. blah. It was well, yeah. I mean, and I told I, you know I did a little not a speech but a little talk before because Ginny was here. Yeah, and I've known Ginny for my whole damn life pretty much. But I, you know, I was talking about the fact it's a whole different. I don't think maybe you've been around long enough. To not even know how, and I don't, I'm not kissing anyone's ass here. It's going to sound like it, but working for the Hubbards is a whole different thing than working for just about anybody else. Wouldn't you agree with that? Uh, listen, there's a a weird. I think there's a, a definite envy from people who work at other organizations yeah. in town, mm -hmm. realizing what the difference is between having. Um, some big giant company that owns you at the bosses who are 3000 miles away versus right. a company that's based right here in the twin cities. Uh, to me, it makes a huge difference. And I think you see it every day and you feel it. So that's, that's very cool that everybody stopped by. Everybody came and I mean, everybody came, but it's one of those situations where, um, you know, my daughter got here early and she and Brittany are good friends. So they're, you know, hugging each other and talking to all this lovey-dovey crap about their friendship. And then Ginny Hubbard gets here, Ginny Morris now, but I still call her Ginny Hubbard because I've known her for her whole life. She comes over and gives me a big hug and talks about, hey, look at that, your grandson's here because uh, Ethan was here and he kept running over with his arms up so I'd pick him up. And it was just, it was this wonderful moment. And I'm not trying to be a pain in the ass here. I'm just saying, it's hot. You guys need to know, well, um, and of course the two of you know because you worked over at that shit all. But anyway, um, it's not like anywhere else. It's just not, right? Yeah, for when sure. I, well, when I got to, before I came over to Hubbard, I was working downtown for CBS, and there was a guy in that building that was just a dick to me all the time. Chad Hartman. <laughs> <laughs> no, Chad's Shots a good friend of mine. Fired. I'm not a shot fired. I Chad's my buddy. I love. We're Chad. coming for you, Chad. Chad's a great guy. But when I made the announcement that I was leaving there, uh, they didn't put like in the email where I was going. So when I was walking down the hallway, the guy said, uh, "Where are you going? Why are you leaving?" I said, "I got a job over at Hubbard," and his whole demeanor changed. He was like, "Oh, really?" Well, well, hey, I mean, keep in touch, man. Like, yeah, there any other openings? Yeah. I was like, no, piss off, dude. You don't get a job. No, no, I no. Hate yes, those, I know. I hate those people. <laughs> God. So dumb. Uh, yeah, so. I know. Oh, now you know my name. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Oh, really? Yeah. Now you want my number. But you yeah. know what's great about that, too, is it's not like we'll do this, 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 and this. We sat down, you know, Ginny was there and Dan was there and Amy was there. And, and you know, uh, the first person I met was because I had never met Rudy before, even though, we, well, I'd seen you before, but I never really met you. Yeah, a couple conversations. Uh, yeah. Um, so, you know, we started going down the list and basically corporate America is not going to sit across the table from you and go, hey, whoever you want, just tell us who you want and we'll take care of it. And yeah, right. of course, it's the three, rare. the three of you came up. Uh, yeah, I mean, go down the list. Bob Sansevier's with us. We got Tim Lammers with us. We got Kristen Burt with us. This nowhere else would that have happened. And again, I'm not sucking up to the Hubbards. I'm just telling you, corporate America needs to get its head out of his ass again. Because who's the most successful in town? The Hubbards. So you can be decent and successful. Gee, what a shock. Right? We're, uh, 
the TV division celebrating 75 years this, this week. So we've been running a bunch of stories, like going way back in the archives. And we did a story the other night about um, the first broadcast. We were the first TV station on the air here. And then they carried the first uh, live TV event, which was a baseball game. And they were talking about, like, you know, they only had three cameras. And, like, to think about you watch a baseball game now and there's a camera, you know, there's friggin' 29 cameras and, you know, all these different places and blah, 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 blah. That's been kind of cool going through that, you know, showing those archive videos. And um, there's, like, some old Saturday night fiddle fiddle jamboree something or other <laughs> it was like the most popular show and we were playing that it was, that was, was fun it's cool it's yeah, cool what was his name again the host of that show i used to know his name but i can't remember i could probably run in the other room and look because there's a poster of it that hangs in yeah. the hallway over by the vending machines or where the vending machines used to be yeah are there vending me there aren't even vending machines anymore are there it's all been moved to the, the cafeteria yeah, area and there's yeah. this whole like wall of vending machine. It's like, it's like uh, the hal of vending machines. It will talk to you. It's got its own intelligence. You walk in. Hello, Rudy. It's time for your beef stick. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Hey, I think you've made too many stops here this right? week. We That's actually wonderful. will not accept your payment. That belt is getting a little tight on you, Rudy. Put the M&Ms <laughs> down. I got to tell Rudy, you, Corinne. Did you really need to have that five-hour energy? Yeah, well, I did. Believe me, I absolutely did. Um, uh, that part of the, the conversation, I'd like to close with my very quick story. When I was doing 10 to 2 at night at 1500 KSTP back in the 70s, right? I was so first on on it but i was scared to death i was like a late teen early 20s i'm on one of the biggest signals in the country and i'm like oh my god but the greatest part of that job i was doing 10 to 2 at night and every night at about 10 40 the the request line would start ringing at about 10 40 every night and i would answer it because i don't know who's calling right that we didn't have caller id at that point I answered the phone, and every single night, Monday through Friday, yeah, is this KSTP? I said, yes, sir, it is. He goes, put that goddamn Johnny Carson on the phone, because he was on NBC, <laughs> yep, and, and yep. at that time, Hubbard was an NBC station. Yep. Every night, that guy called me to bitch about Johnny, but he wasn't calling me. No. He was calling to talk to Johnny. Oh, right. we had different callers. When I worked overnights, <laughs> you and I, I would have loved somebody just asking me for Johnny Carson. I oh, suppose, yeah. My God. Did they ask calls, you for any favors I, or anything? Oh, yeah. Well, there was one guy. Can Ooh. I, I can, it's not, it's just a terrible combination of words, but he'd always, <laughs> it's so gross. He'd call in every night at the same time and go, hey, did you cream your panties? Oh, What? Over what? Oh, God, look at the face that Chris is making. It's so bad. Like, it was, like, the worst. Love and it, it got to the point where I'd, you know, answer. I'd be like, you know, you know, blah blah Like, you know, do our little intro, KQ92. And he would ask, and I'd be so annoyed where I'd go, yes, okay, next. You know, like, yes, yes, I did. Yeah, Just right. so he'd quit calling in. Yes, yes, I did. Bye. Next. Did you have a request as well? Like, so gross. Isn't that just a terrible combination of words? Oh, it's like, unbelievable. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we got a whole uh, crew of people who call in every night. Oh, and I bet. One night producers, like, and um, <laughs> they'll, like, no. There's one lady who would just call and scream, and they would just take the phone, put it on speaker, yeah. or put it on hold and just set it to the side and let her scream because she just lets her rip for – one time I tried to – I'm like, ah, oh, let me see if I can talk totally. to her. Totally. Take the challenge. I know I used to do that because yeah. I used to do the phones yeah. for Tom's show. And I would be like, oh, can God. I talk them off a ledge? Can I get them to like me by the end of this phone call? Right. Did it work? No. No. <laughs> no, it did not work. No. She's still pissed. I'm going to call in every day now after the show. And I'm going, oh, do no. it. Put that Chris Eggert on the phone. <laughs> And then just hang up. We should get that intro. The another what calls I used to get was, this is a call from a Stillwater penitentiary. Oh, yeah. Call. A lot yeah. of penitentiary calls. And depending how bored I was, I'd be like, all right. I accept. Okay. It. 
<laughs> oh yeah, Conjugal visit. Right? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Got some time. My wife was once on a nine-month-long jury trial. She was on the jury nine oh, wow. months. It took. The guy murdered two people, right? I uh, set his house on fire to kill one of them, and then just murdered the other guy. And Catherine was on, the, and he somehow found out because Catherine Brandt, she doesn't even use the same last name I do, but he somehow found out that she was my wife. So I used to get letters from, he must be dead now, I'm assuming he's dead, because I don't get any more letters. Every day, or not every day, but every week, I would get a letter from him, you fixed this trial, just because you're in the media and have all that power, you fixed it, you and your bitch wife. (laughs) I'm like, oh my God, pardon me, sir. But yeah, I murdered two people, and I'm the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Hey, but he's yeah, also well, a big fan. If you're in the media. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh, if you're in the media, a lot of people, you are the devil. There's no doubt yeah. about that. I had a lady threaten to cut off my other leg a couple <laughs> of years ago. <laughs> it was your right. wife. She was just <laughs> pissed at you. <laughs> I shit you not. She was... She is like, I don't know what it was. It doesn't even matter. I Why? think I probably told you guys this before, but she was like, you should cut off your other leg, you dumbass, or whatever she said. And I was like, wow. I'm sorry for laughing. She's just but... OCD. That's just the problem. A little problem. aggressive. A little aggressive. Oh, but I, I, I welcome most feedback. It's not very constructive. It wasn't super helpful. No, 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 no not, not particularly constructive, but that's that's. What that's was what she happens. mad about? Uh, some political thing, because of course oh, I God. was being biased in whatever it is that we had reported, and so she sure. just lost her ass on me, and so. Um, but that was fun. Yeah, I have a question. Can we? Can anybody? Although there's too much money to be made by by appealing to stupid people, um, I, I just wish that everybody would understand that just because I don't have the same opinion that you do about something doesn't mean I'm the most evil son of a bitch ever born. The, if you, you're you out in the street, you see people arguing, what are you arguing about? Well, uh, he's he's one of those people. I'm like, Jesus, would you... The guy doesn't hold a whole lot of power. You know what I mean? Well, the difference is if they were out in the street, they probably wouldn't be arguing. They'd probably be perfectly cordial to each other. But yeah. when somebody's tweeting something at you or then they don't have to, you know, they can put it out in the universe without having to show their face or to have a real conversation about yeah. it. I think that that's that's what the issue is. Yeah, everybody's a tough guy now, too. That's it. Yeah, Everybody, right. Social media created so many, you right. know, keyboard tough guys. Yeah, They're I'm keyboard. on my phone. Yeah, yeah I mean, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a microphone tough guy. Yeah, and a camera same, tough guy. same, right? <laughs> I'll yell at people when they're stealing from the target, and I don't even care. Yeah, it's exa- <laughs> I've seen it happen. That's all I'm saying. I've seen right. it happen. Geraldo, suck it. <laughs> God, Geraldo. Oh, it's sad. Geraldo's got a cane now. Oh. Oh, he does. Yeah, I don't know if he had surgery or something, but he's. Geraldo's an interesting. You know, he and Shelby are good friends. Do you know that? No. I didn't know that. Yeah, he and Don Shelby are buddies. I met him when I was deployed. He came out to Kuwait. And um, at the time, remember Cassie who ran uh, promotions? Oh, sure. She had sent me a bunch of fake mustaches, so I'd wore it to um, to the show. And then he eventually was like, get over here. go, Soldier, get over here. And then he had me on air. And you can tell, I I I have a clip of it. I mean, like a little screenshot of it. And the lady in studio is like, Rolling her eyes like this is ridiculous, and Geraldo was like, "Look at us, we're twins. Look at us." It was so funny. Why didn't she oh, like it? Funny. I don't know because it was he was supposed to be doing like hard hitting news, and he oh, has this God. little specialist there with a mustache with the the sweat that's coming off, and it's like dripping down lower. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. Well, that'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah, tell him to settle down. There's no nothing irritating in the news this morning, is there? Um, not particularly irritating although i i do we that the cannabis bill passed we talked about that right, yesterday right. Passed the house. uh and um this story continues to fascinate me i told you guys a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago actually now um there was the leak at a nuclear plant up in monticello yeah yep. and they didn't tell anybody about it mm-hmm. for like three months after it happened well they've come back and said the water's fine don't worry about it so don't worry about it Trust us. 
Yeah, Just I like to... last time, but we didn't tell you about it for 30 months. <laughs> I remember my father-in-law, because we lived, we, we bought a farm up in Dayton, Minnesota, and lived there for many, many years, which is not that far from where you're talking about. I mean, it's not right next door, but it's not no, that far. that's pretty close. But I do remember my father-in-law, Don, saying, why do you want to live that close to a nuclear power plant? I said, why? He goes, what if there's a leak? And I'm like, there's not going to be a leak. Well, apparently there was a leak. <laughs> so that's really great news. Yeah, I think that's kind of a, a I don't know. And, and actually, it's like the 37th anniversary of Chernobyl today, too. Um, oh, is it really? Speaking of which, I just, I've been seeing that on social media this morning. I mean, obviously, the, the thing that happened there in the big grand scheme of things wasn't that big a deal. But I do think right. that we all have kind of this mental or you think of like three mile Island or mm -hmm. Chernobyl or something like your mind automatically defaults to these horrible scenarios right. when I'm sure it's perfectly fine to live around there. I just, that whole yeah. thing. I know we heard from a lot of residents who are pretty frustrated, frustrated that it was going on for several weeks before anybody told them about it. And that just, that makes you be suspicious of things, right? Like if you're up front in the first, you know, we wouldn't have to feel this way. No, I then mean, can people ever be up front again, do you think, Chris? Well, everyone's trying to play a spin game too. There's no doubt about yeah. that. I mean, that's that that's also the world we live in. Um uh, there's also a fire overnight. Three people in South Minneapolis, an apartment had to be rescued. Really? Um where? Let's see. Uh it's kind of by the sixty first in Lindale. Oh, sure. Okay. I think that's kind of by the Bachmans. Yeah, it is. Down there, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely yeah. is. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, and a firefighter was uh, slightly injured. Let's see what else was going on. Um, and then obviously all the teams, well, two out of three lost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The old basketball and hockey outlooks not looking too good. The basketball one's over and the hockey one's about to be over, but my twins beat the Yankees two days in a row, baby. And like first series they've won from them since 2001, 2001. That's exactly right. They tied the, in New York two and two apiece. Yeah. So they tied, but now they're going to take at least two out of three, maybe all three. And it hasn't happened in 22 years. Isn't that crazy? That's in psychotic, as a matter of fact. It's because the, the, they like to play this game in the newsroom. Our producers are all a lot younger than I am. And so they're like, one of our producers, kind of a wise ass, he's like, he goes, what were you doing in 2001? And I'm like, Mm, thinking back uh, i was doing tv in omaha nebraska he goes he goes well i was in second grade but anyway um, <laughs> <laughs> he goes that's the last time the twins won a series against the yankees and i'm like holy Jeez. crap that is amazing isn't it it, it is insane well, uh, and i yeah. oh go ahead well, no very quickly i was just gonna say it's been already 32 years since we won a world series so let's win another one shall we somebody just showed me that stat the other day too 32 and years you know, they watching the hockey the other night, it was Sunday night's game. Mm -hmm. They showed some, they always have to do the like Minnesota's loserville when it comes to its pro sports. Like right. there's always a little video montage that they work into there. And uh, whenever there's a down point in the game, and that was one of the things that they talked about, you know, they showed the last time there was a world series and like, blah, blah, blah. That's so annoying. Like, yeah, we get it. But it's like the classic cliche network thing to fall back on. Well, let's make sure and point out how, they, you know, their, their pro sports teams suck. Well, good. Thank you so much. Yeah. So super. do our politics. Could we bring super. that up too? <laughs> Everybody's politics in America sucks. I don't care if you're yeah, conservative yeah, or liberal. Or the politics are good. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. You're all nuts. How about that? That would be good. Uh -huh. Chris, always a great pleasure, sir. Good to see you guys. All right. I love the fact that. You know, you told all the stories about people going after you. It's a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I hope you guys don't get threatened to have your legs cut off today. I'll just leave it at that. Oh, I get something every day. There's no question about it. Why, you son of a bitch, Bernard. Like, eh, calm down. Shut up. <laughs> all right, thanks a lot, pal. Yep. Talk to you later. Chris Eggert, Channel 5 Eyewitness News, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Brittany pointed this out to me earlier this morning, and I just love it because there's a picture on the uh, candle as well. Woman who quit job gifts. <laughs> I don't know if I can make it through this. Woman who quit job gifts. Sorry for your loss candles. <laughs> so ex colleagues can mourn her leaving. Isn't that so good? <laughs> Brittany showed me this story this morning. I'm like, are you pulling my tit? 
Uh, she's not. A woman who quit a job made her colleagues sorry for your lost candle so they could mourn her, complete with a photo of her face on the label. Branka Olyaka, 24, made, uh, decided to make the presence as a funny joke for her coworkers. So it wasn't an arrogant thing. She's just trying to be funny. Do you think it's funny? I think it's hilarious. I do too. And I mean, if I got left behind at that company and I was, you know, this girl, whatever, I would love that candle. I would laugh so hard. I have a question for you. Something just popped up on this, the news globe net, mm-hmm. dot net. I don't know, yeah. Kelly Ripa quit what show? There's no way Kelly Ripa. No. That's going to probably be like. Fake news, clickbait. They're going to be like, she, qu- she, she quit was... the show, but it would be like that pop or that uh, soap opera she was on. Yeah. Oh, is that what it is? I don't know, but she's, okay, so the last time I read something in the news, her and Mark had started, you know, the Kelly and Mark show now. Uh, right, with her husband. Right. And then she, they were having to do pre recordings on Fridays because she was doing this generational uh, game show. So maybe there was there was a lot of negative feedback about her pre recording and having to do oh. this. So maybe that's what they're talking about. Um, it could be. Yeah, I don't see, she's not quitting her <clears throat> Kelly just, and Mark show. That's the moneymaker for the her. The one thing I will tell you though, hmm. and you know, we've already talked about this, but television, radio, obviously newspapers already been through it. There are going to be a lot more people than Tucker Carlson and Don Lemon and Dan Bongino losing their jobs because those people have contracts that television is going to have a bitch of a time. And even though they're on streaming, those news, I don't think they have the money anymore. I yeah. really don't. Yeah. yeah. I think you're right. I kind of hope Tucker decides to go out and do his own thing. I hope he doesn't end up at, at a news source. I hope that he decides that he's yeah. going to do his own thing, like uh, like you know, like the Corollas, the Joe Rogans, the yeah, people that right. have just gone out there right. and just created their own entities with their own yep. sales force, with their own product. And I I really think he might do it just for like a first year or so to maybe get the infrastructure of his new thing off the ground. Maybe, but I, yeah. I bet in the first like I bet in the next two three years you see Tucker Carlson doing his own thing. There Probably true. Yeah. I don't know. Everybody's, but but a lot of this has to do with money and the economy and all the rest of it. If anybody thinks it's all just about, oh, all of a sudden you decided that I'm a bad guy, there's a lot of money involved in this. Sure, too. there's mm-hmm. no question mm-hmm. about that. Uh, real quick before we go to break, uh, I did get a hold of Dr. Merman. Oh, you did. So okay. if you guys want to chat with him after the break, real quick, we can talk about uh, the medical marijuana that was just passed in so, Minnesota. Great idea. Great. We'll be right back. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Just check the uh, weather very quickly here because it's looking really good. Uh, warmer, a sunny start with increasing clouds, a few sprinkles, but it's going to be 58. I don't care if it's sunny or cloudy, 58 sounds good. Tonight, cloudy and breezy, mild with a few showers, a low of 48. Then Thursday, tomorrow, partial sun with a few showers, a high of 64. Just a few showers, no big deal. <laughs> and then Friday, mostly cloudy with scattered showers, a high of 57. So we got not bad, man. We got uh, 58, we got 64, and we got 57 uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Looking really good. Supposed to stay in the 50s, I believe. Yeah, it's supposed to stay in the 50s all weekend, too. We're getting there, man. There's no question about that. Uh, is Dr. Merman ready to go? Dr. Merman, how are you? Hey, great, Tom. A long time no talk. I know. I do. Well, the, live. You know, once you get fired, it takes a while to get back on the, on a show. So, you know, it all works oh, out. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm glad you're doing well. I'm doing very How are you guys? How's everybody over at the office? Wonderful. Uh, yeah, everybody's fine. Now, uh, what I wanted to do, doctor. got a lot of patients for medical, uh, cannabis. Uh, sure. so yeah. Question I have for you, Dr. Merman, and we have here on the show, Rudy's on the show, Brittany's on the show. <laughs> dr. Merman is the one who got me, uh, okay to use medical marijuana to sleep. It's been working like a charm for year after year after year. What is going to be the separation between commercial <laughs> outlets and people like you, doctor, who actually, if I hadn't been able to come and talk to you about how to do this, how much to take, how to do it, and all the rest of it, I, I have slept better at this point in my life than I ever had since I was a little kid. Will there still be a lot of people? I, and I guess what I'm asking you, Dr. Merman, is people aren't going to take this upon themselves to diagnose their own level of how much cannabis they should take for medical reasons. Well, I mean, they're still going to come and see you, I'm hoping. Well, um, we're still trying to figure it out, right? Right. Uh, right. As as the talk started about uh, legalizing uh, adult use, uh, I was uh, quite a bit concerned, obviously, because uh, I mean the the issue is as the growers grow a lot more uh, cannabis for people to have fun with, uh, are they gonna 
want to support the medical side of the program, uh, specifically pharmacists. Yeah, uh, and yep. it's, it's extremely important for many of my patients. I would say half. They have to work with the pharmacist to figure out the right medications. Uh, and they're not all the same, and they react different to different people. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's not good to just go somewhere and buy some stuff on the shelf without talking to a, a specialist. Yes. That's my concern. So no, no I, I'm all for, uh, you know, adult use legalization because it should reduce prices for everybody because of scaling, uh, you know, making more product available. Sure. Uh, but I still think we need the pharmacists. And uh, it looks like in the new bill, that program is preserved. Uh, uh, I spoke with our lobbyist yesterday, uh, looked at the, some language, and it looks like it's in there. And I hope it stays. Um, and, uh, I mean, uh, there's a lot of people in the program. I think it's something like 20,000 people in the medical program. And they do need the uh, expert support of the pharmacist. Yes. And, yes. Uh, you know. Uh, I, I see. I'm not. I'm not an expert. I certify people, obviously, because I, I see what I, I understand what that condition is, and I know what's uh, eligible for a medical program, and so I certify. But I don't know how to manage uh, the medications. That's what we need the pharmacists for. Yeah. Uh, yep. Hopefully, they stay. Uh, uh, as far as separation, I don't know. I, I think they'll they'll be able to sell both medical and non-medical in the same store, but I, I, I oh, I'm not sure. sure. I'm not sure. Well, that'd be a good thing. I'll give you an example. I'm talking to Dr. Merman, uh, the doctor who got me certified, got everything taken care of. I'll give a word of warning to people because I've, I've been doing, dealing with this now for about four or five years, something like that. You can't just decide, well, I'll take this upon myself. I'll just do the geef and everything will be wonderful. And blah, blah. An example of why you don't want to do that, and I didn't see this coming, but when I was down in Florida, where I'm also certified, by the way, I bought some different stuff. Um, one of the things, and I don't know who the manufacturer is or whatever, but there's actually a gummy out there, and doctor, maybe you could tell me why the hell this is happening, not, not with most of it, but this one product uh, gives me nightmares. It's a gummy, and it gives me nightmares. Now, if I had just gone on my own and said, you know what, I'm gonna just, uh, I'm gonna figure my own deal out, I'll just take the cannabis, I don't need to go get an exam and figure out what to do and how to, how to do it. If you ended up taking those gummies for the first time, giving you nightmares, you're going to think all of it would give you nightmares. Is that not for, correct, for doctor? Sure. Right. For sure. I mean, right. I've seen, I've seen people having side effects, yeah. crazy side effects. Yep. I mean, they're usually short lived, but still people get scared. Uh, my, my own dad uh, took a dose of the first thing they gave him. He took a dose and he had uh, his leg burning for like two hours. Uh, <laughs> He so he got he got so scared. Well, he he was old at the time, and older people have more side effects. You need the pharmacist to manage it. So we managed it. Everything's fine. Uh, uh, so yeah, you don't want to. You you need to figure out the right product. You need to kind of titrate or how we say it. You know, figure out the right right dose, the right route of administration. There's so many. There's inhaled. There's oral. There's uh, like pills and drops. There's topicals uh, on the medical side, and they all work different. And so that's where you need to figure out the right stuff for you. And everybody is different. And uh, right. uh, once you do, you know, you know we certified, I, I personally certified around 4,000 people. And I see people in follow-up, and they keep raving about this. It's like uh, this uh, changed their life. Um, so, but, but it needs to be the right product. And it's, it's not the fun product. It's a medical product. <laughs> right. They are not the same. No, they're not the same. And people need to understand that, that, that it's just not a good idea if you're having trouble sleeping. If this bothers you, that bothers you. Don't try to diagnose yourself. Don't try to pick out the right cannabis for yourself. Go to a doctor. Get it done. Because, like I said, if I had taken those gummies, the first thing that, 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 that my first experience with, with medical marijuana, if I had eaten those gummies, I said, I'm not taking this stuff. It gives me not I would have assumed all of it would then. And it's just yeah. not true. Exactly, exactly. Now, it, you know, people may think it's going to be uh, cheaper to take, uh, you know, to just buy stuff on the shelf, uh, whatever, the recreational stuff, and use it for medical. Probably not, because uh, it's, as far as I understand, uh, the medical will be tax-exempt, uh, so it will be some savings there. 
Um, and it, it's really worth it to get expert advice, yes. uh, regardless of the price, really. Well, Dr. Merriman, we need to stay in touch through this whole thing because it's going to be what they're thinking about August when the when the stuff on the street is going to be available. Well, not on the street, but, the, you know, retail. Uh, okay, so that I, I, I spoke with the head of the Minnesota Medical Cannabis Office, okay. and she told me it will take at least a couple of years to get really? all the licensing done and uh, the stuff grown uh, and, and having it available in a proper way. Okay, so this is not uh, like uh, immediate. I mean, people oh. I understand will will be able to grow their own uh, this summer, probably. Uh, I'm I'm planning on having a plant in the house. I like the you know the way it looks, uh, but uh, uh, and I never tried smoking it myself. By the way, if anybody's interested, no, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> you should. Yeah, this that's is not true. My thing, but I like the plants. Uh, but. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's, uh, but you really shouldn't expect, uh, uh, you know, legal recreational stuff available for probably a couple of years. That's what I was told. All right, sir. Well, like I said, we'll stay in touch with you, and I'm glad we could reconnect with you after I was off the air for a couple of months. It's nice to have you back, and we'll talk again uh, soon. Doc. Thank you. Can I shout out my uh, connection, like uh, the website? Course, oh, absolutely. Us, yep. Uh, so people can uh, call if they want, uh, lifemedical.us, uh, and uh, there's a link uh, to send me an email if you want or call the office or uh, 952-933. 8900 to call the office and uh, we'll get you certified if if you qualify. All Very right, good. everybody. Yeah, have a good time. All the best. We'll get it done. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Doctor Bye-bye. Jacob Merman, ladies and gentlemen, the guy who certified me for medical marijuana. But yeah, you got to be very careful with all that stuff because it's um some of it's not going to match up with your body chemistry, I guess is just the way it works. Absolutely. And I know that um even recently that cops around here are having a lot of calls with overdose because people are doing edibles for the first time ever. Yeah. Somebody in my family had to call the police oh, really? not too long ago. I did and not realize. They may or may not be the matriarch of our family. <laughs> oh, my God. Rat her out, why don't you? It's really, really nice. It's the well, Someday I will tell you guys a story. We laugh about it. This was about six months ago. We laugh about it, mm, like a every little. other week. I mean, like you do, she doesn't. <laughs> oh no, she laughs so hard. Oh, about does she it. really? Yes, that's great. That's all I'm gonna say. Judd, you ready to go? I am indeed. Let's do this thing. Now I got I started something new. Mm-hmm. Oh, we need some headphones. Here. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Um, I started something new that what I'm going to do now is I'm going to follow everyone else's lead because every story you read now has to make a reference to it. So what I would like to say is at the start, Rudy's here, Brittany's here, um, I'm here, and then now Judd has joined us. But also, we have a person of color on the show. Yep. Are you getting sick of that? Oh, I've been sick of it, but you know, I know you have. Just it's black. That's fine. It's you don't like, have to get cute with it. But why does and you every don't have to story. like alert the media? Like everybody, calm down. There's a black person in the room. I like to, <laughs> I like to just announce it myself. Then it, yes. yeah, just de-escalates right yeah. off the top. That's actually the reason Britney's mom called the cops. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> There's a person of color in Studio A. Oh. oh my God. She was like, either I'm high or there's a black person here. <laughs> Does the black community understand these are just politicians trying to get your vote? Mm-hmm. That's yes. all it is. Yes. And if anybody like Britney's uh, matriarchal leader, <laughs> mm-hmm. before you call the police because you think that there's something wrong, call your friendly black neighbor and they will walk you through your high experience. There's That's no a reason great to advice. There you go. I'm here for the people. So My mom are. would love <laughs> a direct line to you there's and no not for the, yeah, for the worst reasons possible. <laughs> She thinks I you are it. so cute. Yeah. So, Judd. Yes. Uh, as it was pointed out earlier, ladies and gentlemen, the Minnesota Twins are going to take a, a series from the New York Yankees, whether they lose today or not. They're going to take a series from the Yankees for the first time in 22 years. Jeez. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that absolutely incredible? I, I think it is. Byron... Buxton's post-game quote last night was, what? No way. I was six years old. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Judd, it's just what's so great about this is you and I sat here 
uh, and talked about this before the season started. And we both had the impression of watching preseason baseball that this team is a lot better than they've been. So if a couple of guys, now, I mean, you're a sports reporter. I'm just a hunyuk off the street sitting next to a person of color and a wonderful woman. Oh, uh, so I don't even feel comfortable. You'd be well, nice to me. That's what they got. I do that's not feel yeah, comfortable. That's really weird. Like, I mean, are you sure? Like, she's okay, I'm sure. I'm not even right. that. No, okay is a high bar. I hit my coffee okay. over three times today, Judd. She knocked your coffee over. It and spilled. She spilled about a gallon of coffee in here today. It's oh, that is an inexcusable waste, Brett. Really Thank is. There's no I mean, come about. on. Be careful with the stuff. Quite talented. Okay, so I want to get back to the Minnesota Twins for a second here. I, I think it's... Hey, like I said, we did see it coming before the season started. Then we lost, uh, uh, what, eight games to people we should have never lost more than about two or three games to. And I went, oh, don't start collapsing on me. Well, they come storming right back. They come home. Do you think the weather has something to do with that, too, that it's just been brutal pretty much everywhere they played other than Miami? You know, I think it doesn't help. But I think So here's what I like, though. I'll start off with what I like about this team. And th- this goes back to our conversations the first week when things were going well, too. The starting pitching now, Tom, yes. is just damn good. Yes. Well, like, this is yep. not a fluke. These guys are good. Health provided, the the starting staff is good. Um, their problem is there are times when I think at the plate, the offense is suspect. But if they could score, you know, yes. let's, say they, let's say they could score four to five runs per game, which I don't think in 2023 is asking for a ton, right? Four, you know, four runs, for instance, they're going to be in most games because their pitching now yep. is good. Now, I think the question, like to circle back to what you just said, is as it heats up, you know, as we like, I hear it might get into the seventies in June. God knows. <laughs> you um, heard that? Okay, good. But as it heats up, do the bats get going a bit more? Because I, I love the fact that this team is now built around or based around starting pitching that doesn't include guys who are 42 years old or some guy they signed off the street because he, he was good in 1978. Like, it right. felt like that. Um, and so that's where I think there's a, a potential for sustainability that probably hasn't existed. And I do like that. But, yeah, I mean, 22 years, the Yankees. This is unbelievable. 2001. I know. It is just amazing that, look, there's so many things to get behind here. And a matter of fact, Tevin, as a mm-hmm. person of color, yep. you could share in this with me because Joey Gallo is a person of color, right? I have no idea who you're talking no, about. No, I think he's just a white guy, Tom. Is he? I thought he was. Uh, is he really? I think he's just a white guy. I'm sorry. Uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, so he's like a Sicilian then. Yeah, I think he's just a big, big white guy. But what's so great? Got it. Really? But I think it's interesting that the Twins picked up somebody who hits a lot of home runs, who's named after a guy who ran the mafia and was murdered. What do you think? It's got to intimidate. The intimidation starts before you even get off the plane. The original <laughs> Joey yeah. Gallo. Way, dude, a way, yeah. way, the long con, yeah. some would say. Well, that, did you guys watch uh, uh, The Outfit or what was the name of it? The Offer. Did you watch The Offer? Uh-uh. Nope. Oh, God, you got to watch The Offer. It's about the making of The Godfather. Oh, it's a okay. phenomenal series. Really oh, I thought good. that's super good. Yeah. And Joey Gallo, the, there's a guy who plays Joey Gallo in the movie. What a psychopath that guy was. Honest to God. So maybe this, so Judd, is this, is this Joey Gallo not a psychopath? Uh, I don't think so, but good. he can hit really, as we talked about uh, on Tuesday's show, he can hit really long home runs. That's yes. good. You got that right. But I did not realize, I guess I shouldn't be shocked because of the name, I did not know about that there was a Joey Gallo who helped run the mob. That's very interesting. Oh, yeah, and he was... Mob stuff, to me, I I absolutely love. I'm so fascinated by it. You're right, he is a honky. I never never knew that. I'm sorry to disappoint. God, I was trying to pull... (laughs) I didn't mean to buzzkill the entire morning show, the entire show, by coming on... And informing you, he's just a big white guy. I was trying to buy favor from Tevin by <laughs> by bringing up another person of call, and I just stepped in it. Oh, oh nobody's God. arguing. With me. Thank you so much. Yeah. Great, great what working do you want with us all to of you. Defend you now? Yes. Yes. Now I'm supposed to walk around yeah. defending yes. you? Yes, no, no, You're Tom, it's okay. It's no problem. <laughs> The best I, I mean, can do Kevin is, is clearly hurt now. Yeah, the best I could do is say he's an honorary black man from this point forward. Yeah, I like but that. That's, yeah, that's I don't about think you have good. that power. No, I mean, I, that's we'll a try. Lot of, that's a... I'll bring it up at the next meeting. Okay, good. But yeah. look at this. 
I assume because the guy has talent that he was not a white guy. Isn't that a good thing? That is a safe assumption. Yeah, see, there you go. That is a safe assumption. Uh, That's all I'm saying. All right, let's get back to reality. (laughs) I want the Twins to stay on this tear. Look, if you can cut... I was very worried. i got to be honest with you guys. I was very worried after that horrible two series we had, uh, or three or whatever the hell it was. Oh, now great. Now the Yankees, and you brought it up. They haven't won a uh, series with them in 22 years. But no, they're handling, I mean, and didn't just beat them. They kicked their ass both games. Yeah, and and again, if they can just score, let's say five, four, five, six runs. It felt like there was a stretch there a few weeks ago where they either scored one run or 12 runs, Tom. And it's like, you don't need to score 12. You don't need 12. 10, you don't need 10. Um but yeah, it just it feels like there is far more hope. They they were in first place, you know, almost all of last year before Cleveland passed them, I think finally in September. And the Twins at that point in time just fell apart completely. Yes, they did. But, you know, I was always skeptical of that team. I I always thought cuz the pitching I didn't think was good enough and there were things about that team where when they did fall apart it didn't shock me. This feels like it's built it's built with more sustainability. I also love the fact that they now have in Michael A. Taylor, a center fielder behind Buxton who can play all the time. Yeah. So, yep. you, know, you know, so you're not running out guys who are, you, there, nothing drove me more crazy as, as a frequent um, viewer of Twins games than seeing Jake Cave dive for a ball, miss it badly, and it would roll to the fence. It, it was yeah. Willie Norwood like Tom. Willie Norwood. Norwood. Oh my you know, God. it was like the old days of Norwood and and Hoskin Powell and Bombo. God bless them all. But um, this feels this feels like they actually have a guy that, that can start in center for as long as they need. Buxton DHs. It's not ideal, but if Buxton plays, it is ideal. If that makes sense. I couldn't agree more. And by the way, you mentioned his name, so I got to tell the story. Just down the road here a little bit, when the queue used to be on uh, Highway 100, 917 North Lilac Drive, as a matter of fact, I went to the, uh, was it just a Byerly's at the time? It wasn't the Lunds and Byerly's right there, uh, just up the road, and Hoskin Powell was in there. Okay. And I had always heard that Hoskin did like to hit the pipe. Did you ever, did, were, you, did, were you aware of that? I don't recall that, but I'm not shocked. Yeah, apparently he liked to hit the, that's, that was the word anyway. Mm-hmm. So I see Hoskin Powell. I remember, God, they tell me the guy's hitting the pipe all the time, so good for him, getting a little relaxation. I watched him for about two minutes because he was kind of just in the air. He was in the uh, the produce section, okay? And I had to buy a bunch of stuff and, you know, moving around. Uh, at least three minutes while I was in the produce section of that Byerly store, Hoskin Powell was holding a musk melon or cantaloupe in his right hand, staring at it. <laughs> I've been there. Oh my god, I've been there. I have a thousand percent been there. <laughs> what is going through your mind at that point, Britt? You know, like when you are yeah. staring at the melon, what is going through your mind that causes you to examine it that closely? Oh, first off, you don't realize you've been standing there that long. And right. then you have, when you do realize, you go, oh no, how long have I been standing here? Should I do something normal? And then you all of a sudden, so, oh. it's so funny if you watch somebody high, they'll all of a sudden like do something else because they're like, is this what a normal person would do? Like, is this, should I transition to walking now? Like, it's so funny. That's me. Oh, by the way, I got to take take a, a very quick moment here because I'm looking up at the screen now. We have five people on the air right now, and the video stream looks beautiful. God, you guys did a great job with that. Yeah, no well, no question about it. Tevin ups our game a little no, bit. I, was, I didn't do Handsome anything. Fella. I have nothing. Rudy was like, "We're not going to do our first YouTube video is going to be with Tevin on it." <laughs> I was like. All right. Really? Oh, I hate to disappoint everybody. It's not as good You could have stepped it up. Your be, outfit, should, you could have oh, honestly. Come on, take the praise, Tevin. Yeah, take whatever, the praise. Okay, Judd, I have to ask you a question. Yeah. When you guys are on the show every day, do you live stream YouTube? Um, we don't live stream it all the time. If we do post-game shows, we do. Yeah. Uh, for the most part, I Declan rolls on it, and then uh, it comes out. Once we're done. Okay, so that's yeah, what we're it, doing. It's not live. Yeah, that's it's not live. You think that's better? Because the only problem we have with that is that uh, 
you know, up on YouTube, if anybody comes in here like a guest and drops the F bomb, they're going to pull you right off YouTube. Well, swearing's okay. Their biggest mm-hmm. concern is having unlicensed music or yeah. anything yeah, else that you can't have. Huge. That's really the big thing. The other it's thing huge. that we are looking to do is to make sure that we have control over it. So if there is anything that you know yeah. we, we want to have taken out, that's. But for the most part, it really is all about YouTube. Pull, giving you strikes and pulling you down. That's why, yeah, yeah. Because then that way we can, if there are moments where we can play something on the air, like a piece of music, mm-hmm. we can go back, edit the video, take that okay, out of the YouTube move. video, and then good we still idea. have it for the yep. actual show. It doesn't hurt the audio of the show. Excellent. So, that, yeah, Tom, Tom, swearing fine. Pink Floyd, forget about it. You're yep. done. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, if you hear a Rolling Stone song, you are off. If you drop an f bomb, it's like, hey, welcome to YouTube. Thank you. Yeah, so that's much. true. Oh, so YouTube doesn't mind that because oh, I was told no. they do. So, but but and, I don't know. And well, you and I dealt with this a lot. Yeah, because you can brand. So essentially, like when you're creating your page, you tell YouTube like. Is this for kids? Is this going to have oh, yeah, whatever? Yeah. And then they let it slide. But yeah, music, if you even hum a song, they're like, hey, <laughs> did you get permission to hum and that then, song? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. he's right. And then on top of it, you can say like, hey, we're going to use copyrighted music. It just will be like, okay, then you'll get zero money if yeah, this brings right. in any money. <clears throat> right. Because yep. like, remember when we were trying to live stream when you were DJing? Oh, yep, yeah, that got yeah. taken down all the time. Yep. Yeah, but then if you admit that like, hey, I will accept that I will not make any money off of this, they're like, okay, cool, go oh, for it. And speaking of this, just because I'm being money off of music, Yeah. did you know that, so Diddy, he did the cover of Every Breath You Take based yeah. off of Sting, yep. so he didn't get permission before he made I the know. song. He pays Diddy like, Seven hundred eighty thousand dollars a year. I saw that to continue to have <laughs> that song. That's yeah, so like, wild. Close to a million. Yeah, it's it was, not bad. Yeah, Sting had said something like, "Yeah, he pays me two thousand dollars a day," and then Diddy went back and was like, "It's actually more like five thousand yeah. dollars a day." Yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. That's so. How wild. do you not get permission? Right. Like, how, I know. How but do you just think to yourself, "I'll just sample this song and take it"? I yeah, think he was weird. worried he was going to say no, so he's like, "I got to." Proved him how good of a song it's going to be. Not mm-hmm. a good idea. No, no. Let's not prove anything to anyone. Calm down. So uh, it, it, it's going to be true. I've never, I've never been on YouTube on a show before. I don't think, because uh, you know the, the queue is not going to. Wouldn't they have to spend a dollar to get that done? Uh-huh. Yeah, something like that. The phenomenal people over yep. Cumulus. Um, so yeah, it's it's rather interesting. But what I'm telling you, the reason I even brought this up, I'm looking at at the the frame. It looks really, really good. I mean, it, it absolutely looks really good, except for, for I looked at the frame, the framed pictures of the five of us in a political manner. I would be by far the most far left human being on the picture, and Tevin would be the most far right. So are you happy? With, are, are you comfortable with that? You're far right in I the picture? I think so. I forget which side I'm supposed to be on, depending on what day it is. But yeah, I think, exactly. that, I think that works for me. I like that. No, but The middle, seriously. Tevin. Take the middle. <laughs> Tip of the cap to all you guys. It looks really, really good. And once uh, you start, they can start watching about what time, Rudy, during the day? Uh, I should be up on YouTube, probably like around uh, the same time we get the show pushed out, about 1130 noon. Oh, same there. time then? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, excellent. 1130 or noon. And so Tom, watch. Yes, this is where this is where the kids are, and I'm not joking. Yeah. Oh, that's what I hear. Yeah. Are coming for your kids, and I regret people, saying that you, immediately. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> not kidding. You are going to find out that people are going to discover you who never turned on the radio and are probably like 25. No doubt about mm-hmm. it. There's no question about that. They got enough problems the way it is. You know, Tevin, how old are you now? Uh, 31. God, you're I'm in the up, 30s. I'm up there. Yeah. I'm up there. Yep. We Tell need a new aging, young man. person. I'm up there. Were yeah, you like you 24 definitely do need when I met you. Yeah, I was like yeah, 22, <laughs> 23, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, unbelievable. Well, what happened was, and I'll be right up front. Uh, does your mom still live over in Osceola? Uh, no, she's over in Hutchinson now. She's in Hutchinson now. Yep. Okay. Oh, that's right. I remember that. Yep. But she's in Osceola, and uh, she's the only person that does not like uh, Tevin on the show. She said he doesn't know. I just don't like him. Get him off your show. It turned out it was your mother. Yeah. 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 No, I was like, Mom, you have to stop <laughs> calling in. Stop yeah. calling in, Mom. I know it's you. But in any case, yeah, so great job. Uh, you got all you guys, and I know, you know, everybody in this, uh, well, I shouldn't say everybody in this office because I had nothing to do with it, but it looks really good, the the way it sets up and all. It, it's nice. Sorry. I went on and on there a little bit. No, it looks fantastic. It does. It looks great. Exactly right. Uh, so we got uh, Suckwad uh, basketball team. Ugh, they played hard. A, 
Yeah. Last no. two games. What is four and one? Stop. <laughs> it's a disappointing. It's a disappointing it's, end to it's a disappointing definitely still, season. It's definitely still disappointing. But Ant looked great the last mm-hmm. couple games, so that's hopeful. But then you got your hockey team, which is about to get their ass kicked. Well, yeah. they did last night. That was yeah, a they huge did last disappointment. Night. It was. They, they they uh, they bleeped the bed last night. I mean, game five, <laughs> huge game. They they they, t- they played awful. I don't understand they did. it. It was terrible. Got me very worked up. I understand. So basketball, professional basketball, well, and college basketball in this state now sucks. We got to do something about that University of Minnesota team because I love watching Minnesota, University of Minnesota basketball. Love it. You are so right. I've always said this. Okay, so so my passions are hockey football and baseball Mm -hmm. but i've always said in all of the events that i've gone to in this town when golfer basketball is good and it's been years now so there's a group of people that are gonna be like what are you talking about yes yes when when golfer basketball is good back in the old days when you had a saturday afternoon big 10 game in the barn and it was rocking i don't think there was a better venue in town to be at as far as the excitement uh, there's no question about that. And the barn is just so special. Did you ever play basketball on that floor? Uh, no. I've uh, been on that floor like have? twice, and it's cool, but that's, it's, it, is that's cool. it. Yeah, it's it's very fun to play on. Like Just because it's it like is. an elevated surface, everybody's yep. kind of lower. It feel, yeah, it's I've played on it once, and it's only it fun. one problem of playing on that court. Don't fall off. Is when you're playing with Don <laughs> Shelby, and he takes all the shots. That's all I'm saying. That, and you know, he's a damn good basketball player. Did you know Which, that? No, but that... Don Shelby kind of is one hell of a good basketball player. Kind of what? I mean, I, just because from my perspective, all I do is see him on TV yes. like, delivering the news. So I'm like, ah, it doesn't seem he doesn't showcase his athleticism on the show. He's a very good athlete, actually. Yeah, he really is. He's full of surprises. That one. He is indeed. I think the world. He's of a that huge man. hoops guy too. Huge, enormous yeah. ho- hoops guy. He goes way back. Um, but yeah, the the issue is as. Tevin said, I, I would think the only bad thing, and it was actually, it's an advantage when the Gophers are good, which again, mm-hmm. they have not been for years. Um, it's an intimidating place because when that place is full, it gets really loud. It's really cool. And opposing players are very afraid, to Tevin's point, about flying off the floor. Yeah, it's definitely a psychological element to it where you don't maybe take that extra half step to save a basketball or whatever yeah. else. Yeah, yep. I just made a huge mistake forgetting we were on camera. I'm going... Brittany, get your head out of your ass. <laughs> I'm no, holding that, up a piece of paper. That's the charm, Tom. No, no, no. Yeah. Don't don't stop that. Like, like you're on camera, but it's the show. It is so the like, show, don't, yeah. So, like, don't suppress your your ability to <laughs> joust and cajole. I just can't wait I for will. the viewers to see Brittany, like, frantically waving at Rudy to get his attention to, like, Turn mute up the my mic, mic so or, yeah, cough. whatever yeah. it is. But no, did you see what they put in? Oh, well, you got the cough. Look at this. Oh, okay. I'm like, like, here, brother. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna from now. Let's talk to Judd Zolgad. There you Sounds go. like Star You're, Trek. It is Star Trek. You're beaming in. We have to take a break here. We'll be right back in a couple minutes. More with the fellas right after this. It is 924, now 24 minutes after 9 o'clock. And just to prove to you all, because I didn't even know this, that there is a God. Do you want me to prove it to you right now? Yeah. Hmm. I just talked to Rudy about 10 minutes ago about the live stream. Is it going to be live? Is it going to be put on later? And then I, I kind of implied, well, I wouldn't worry about a live stream because nobody's going to drop the F-bomb. It's just not going to happen. It's too unprofessional, so don't even worry about it. We're in that break, and during the break, I gave uh, Brittany not one but two fingers, and I look up, and there I am on camera <laughs> giving her two. So... Who's the yeah. first one that dropped the ball? That'd be me. That was the first thing I thought of. As you're really? giving her the double <laughs> burger to the camera, I was like, Didn't this is going to be it. a great meme or a gif. The first she had no did. reaction at all. Can you no, tell? No, had no reaction at all. <laughs> like, Can you like, tell the didn't life I live? One bit. I know. She's just used to it. She's used to me Didn't giving even her flinch. the finger. Didn't even flinch. Ah, oh, God, I tell you. It's what a world. What, what a, a world. world. Uh, I should mention, by the way, because uh, Rudy's mentioned a couple of things he's going to be doing, uh, making some appear- appearances and opening for... Well, I, I don't want to tell him who you're opening for. You tell him. Yeah, so uh, May 19th and 20th, I'll be at Bricktown Comedy Club in Oklahoma City, opening four shows for Adam Carolla. Hey! hey and then uh, and then tonight, uh, headlining House of Comedy, Mall of America, show 730. You can get tickets, houseofcomedy.net. 
There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Plenty of action. We got to sabotage him. Uh, Rudy, don't listen. We have to sabotage Rudy because if he gets too big, he's going to leave us. So he's going to hit the road. So. Corolla, man, that's awesome. I know. Isn't that huge? Great. Thank that you. That was a great that guy. That is really cool. That's so exciting. Really, really great guy. No question about it. That's all I'm saying. And then tomorrow night, what do you got cooking, Judd? Oh, big night. It's our uh, surly draft party, which will be held at Park Tavern in SLP, of course. Uh, it'll be in the 11th frame, which is that back room there. Yeah, great room. We're going to uh, start to take people in the room at 6 o'clock. The draft starts at 7. We will be live on YouTube as well, but at the Park Tavern for the duration of the draft. And it's really interesting because right now we have no idea what the Vikings are going to do. There's been talk they might trade up. There's been talk that they might trade back. We don't have a clue uh, but it's going to be a good time, and of course, you are, are all invited. And I think Tom, th- that you said that you were going to try to stop by Park Tavern. I correct? am indeed. I'll probably come by that sometime in that six o'clock hour, so I'm not in the way during the draft, the actual draft. But I just want to come over and show some support for you guys, and Appreciate then I'll get that. the hell out of your way and go home. Oh, you you can stick around. Can I drink beer with? Brittany? No, you can't. We're you and I have talked hammered. about this. Hey, we are done with that portion of our Quit lives. Me. Quit me. Quit me. You, Quit me. Let me tell you a story. Hey, let me tell you something. We're in a fist now, fight. <laughs> now, Britt, you seem pretty young, though, to to be done. So, Thank like, you. you know... I am young. Oh, there's more to that. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I quit. I've, dr- I've quit drinking over 10 years ago. I was in my 20s when I uh, had to retire. So that just showed you... How drastic it was! If I still couldn't. Was it after the night that you got punched in the face? It, it was after, library, but yeah. not as oh. soon after as it should have been. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. oh, yeah, wait you, a minute! You know when like a college prospect tears her ACL and then doesn't go on to play <laughs> right, in the pros? That's right. what Brittany did. Yeah. Taken down in her prime. You could have been one of the greats. Oh yes, uh, the greats. Yeah. I'm telling you, I retired at the top of my game. Is all I'm gonna say. And it was it was time. It was very obvious for everybody involved. <laughs> hey, for the good of the show, this sounds like a story that probably needs to be told. I'm just going to throw that out there. Chad, I just claimed that you were my best friend, and you aren't feeling like it right now. <laughs> that was for the purposes of a spot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there you go. I'll come for you, son. Did, did you and I quit at the same time? Because that was about uh, yes, 11 you years ago. At, well, I do have to say I quit a little before you. Oh, you did? Okay. So I was kind of a trendsetter. And I was working at the queue the night that I was a trend. You were like, <laughs> you were like, gave okay. up drinking before it was cool. Yeah. And I remember at the time you were working from your house, I think. And I, I faxed you, hey, good luck, because you went off on your journey. Was that like 11, 12 years ago, something like that? Yeah. Yep. You faxed him? Yeah, that's how we communicated back then. Faxing. Yeah. What, are you going to come for us now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming for you, man. A, a, just, I'm just a young person faxing my life away. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, I don't really know for sure, but it was a, I think it was either 11 have, or 12 years ago. Here, I'll look. A I've, long time my ago. My sober uh, birthday's coming up, and I have the year on there because I always forget. Uh, 2010, that's when I quit drinking. 13 years ago. Yeah. Wow. wow. This, so it ju- has been 12 This July, yep. Because I quit on my, I quit, did I quit on Easter? It was something rem- like that. It was... Yeah, no, it was, yeah, it was, no, it was after me. I'm was, just clarifying. No, like, but I, I mean, it's quite a bit. Uh, <laughs> Damn it, Tom. Whole, she I'm first. an expert she at quitting drinking. She went Tom. first. She needs to have this one. Yeah. Know, don't you take credit take for this. this. For so I did. What a pain you in think the ass. Was, I don't think it was a whole year later, though. I'm saying, Flip like, I think again. it was in 2010 <laughs> still. I'm trying to remember when I quit drinking because I, I can, can't remember. I can find the day. Oh, you do quickly. Do you have the fax receipts? Yeah, I th- here's what I want to know. First of all, why did you have to communicate by fax? And second of all, was was it the old school fax paper that that would like roll up on you? Well, I didn't get so I would fax Tom all the morning stuff. Like here's all the okay. stuff. That's how you know. And, and by the way, I'm done drinking. No, and then I found out he quit drinking, so I said, oh "Hey, good luck on your journey. Been there." I was trying to be positive, but I like didn't want to like you know it was also a company, so I didn't yeah. want to be whatever. And, you know, Tom would come into the studio here and there, but it was just one of the days that you weren't in there. Right, and yeah. so I was faxing. I remember writing him a little message like, hey, I would do that all the time. Like if it was 7-Eleven, I'd be like, happy Slurpee day. I'd like add to the little fax. Because I would keep in mind I was alone on the overnight studio. So I was <laughs> right, like right. dying yeah. for interaction. So like, and then then somebody would come in and I'd be like, get out of here. Um, 
But yeah, I could find the date for sure. I know. I have no idea. I thought it was March something. I thought it was right around, because my mother died, I think, on March 22nd or something like something like that. But that was 2008. That would have been much earlier. But I think it was, it still bothers me to this day that my mother's dead. Is that not a good thing? Yeah. Yeah. 15 I think, years, I think man. Most people it would bother them to some degree. But it never goes away. It's, no. That part sucks. I hate that. No, when other I, I people think- die. No, I, I think the death of a parent is processed differently by every person. Yeah. I really do. Yeah, you're I don't right think there's that. a right you're or right. wrong rule. I think you're right about that. My aunt sings at a lot of funerals. She's an opera singer. Oh, sure. And oh, really? She told me a story once where uh, she was at a funeral singing for a gentleman who had passed away. And the son got up to deliver the eulogy. He got up to the pulpit. He <laughs> bent down into the microphone and said, my father was a terrible, awful peop- a person, and we're all glad that he's gone. And he turned around and walked away. There was not a tear shed at the funeral. Nobody's, nobody batted an eye. They just That's went, terrible. yep, he was right, and they just went on. And that was that. And then she finished up the funeral, got paid. They buried his body. Not a, a total dry eye to be seen in that, in that church. Crazy. Why would you bother with a funeral to do right. that? Just have the person cremated and be done with Absolutely. it. Be done with it, exactly. Yep. It's absolutely true, but uh, yeah, that as a matter of fact, we'll get off the subject here. It's not morose, though. It's just part of living and all the rest of it. But my mother died on Easter Sunday in 2008, okay? I promised myself, when I walked in and I looked across the room this long, it's probably 70 feet away, I could see my mother's casket, and she was laying in it. And I said, there's no way I'm going to go look at that. And I promised myself that day, and it's held true, I will never go to a funeral again. No way. These make me way too sad. Even if I didn't even know the person, I don't want to go to a funeral, right? But yeah. what if I already have in my, like, what, what I want to happen is, like, you give my eulogy. I never liked Brittany. I'd like you to know <laughs> that. And keep in mind, things have gone horribly wrong if I die before you. I'm just going <laughs> to yeah. say it. Especially that would not you, be good. Especially since you gave up drinking so much longer before he did. Yeah, you yeah. quit way before Tom. Way to make that very clear. started the trend, some would say. <laughs> By the way, I should mention that, that many, many people in the business have told me that it's interesting that, that, I, that I should have probably quit drinking, but I, I had no problem... A lot of people who quit drinking, they go through DTs, and they go through this and that and the other thing. I, there was not a problem. To this day, I don't give a rat's ass. I didn't care that day, and I still don't care, right? I had my fun when it was there, I'll tell you that. That's why I feel like you're not an alcoholic, and it drives no, me nuts. You're not. like, yeah. I just gave it up, and whatever, did something else, and I'm like, all right, right. you most, don't get to be in our club, sorry. Yeah. Most people have some, like, traumatic story, like I was drinking my second case of bush light for the day, and <laughs> whatever, ended up well, naked no, in a say, field I somewhere. Say that didn't happen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that's a different Give me idea. five cases of cores right now. <laughs> Give me another <laughs> Well, my friend Dougie Dixon. Oh, by the way, I want to thank, uh, it was Channel 5, as a matter of fact, I do believe. Uh, Doug Dixon is a very good friend of mine. He has a son who's uh, incapacitated in ways. He's in a wheelchair, plays wheelchair basketball. I, that was on Channel 5, I believe. I what? believe uh, just a few days ago. But Dougie, I miss you. I love you, pal. He's one of my favorite people on earth. Just a, just a great guy taking care of his son, just a wonderful father and a great friend. But I do remember when Dougie would come to my house, he would go to the refrigerator, he'd grab a beer, and three for me. <laughs> <laughs> I will never. He brought one for himself and three for me. I could pound beer like a madman. Woo! Okay, that's impressive. Oh, I could drink a lot of beer back then. I had like three to one. Beers. That's impressive. Yeah, I drank forty-seven beers one night at oh, Runyon. Jesus, forty-seven. No, that's. Oh yes, it was over like a six-hour period. But still, but so it's space. Kevin and I are like, no, 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 don't discredit that. I spaced <laughs> don't it out. Don't discredit yourself. Yeah, exactly. It was um, twenty thirteen. You quit drinking. So it was only ten years ago. Yeah. Which is quite a bit of time. Yeah. When, so when was it, though? Was it in the spring? There, it was March. So you're it right. was March. I thought so. Yeah. Just before my, my mother's death day or whatever. Yeah. I mean, many years later, five years later. But uh, no, I, I, if you're thinking about it, unless you, you know, are addicted to it, that's going to be a much bigger problem. But quitting drinking is not that anywhere near as big a deal as everybody thinks it is. No. And I feel like it gets easier to quit 
like the older you get because you're like yeah, i'm just probably. tired of feeling hungover <clears throat> and whatever else and yeah probably let's true go, let's go back to this 47 over a right. six hour period one short of two cases one short of two <laughs> cases and by the way you know how i found out i drank i, I brought this up i think a couple weeks ago but I found out it was 47 because um, we were sitting around. There were three other guys, and they were just hammered. Mm-hmm. I never got that hammered on beer. Wine, I could get nuts and whiskey oh. or tequila. You're get away somebody. from Tommy. <laughs> get away from him because he's a psychopath. But, yeah, so they're sitting around, and I said, hey, why don't you give me the keys because you guys are pretty hammered, and I'll just drive home. It's not that big a deal. <laughs> and the server goes, what? I said, I'm not even slightly drunk. He goes, well, it seems that way, but that's not possible. I said, why? And he goes, look. And he takes out about this four-foot-long uh, printout of all the stuff that we had been drinking because yeah, they print it all yeah. out before they give you the bill. I had 47 anchor steams that night. And Runyon's is Runyon's is still around, correct? Yeah, I believe yes. so. They probably yep. still tell that story at the I bar know. to this yeah. day. Could you imagine being the server? <laughs> like, you guys will never believe no. He drank 47. 47 they, the beers. receipt's hanging on the wall in the back. <laughs> it probably it, is. It doesn't exactly. even have to be because it's Tom Bernard. It's no, just like no, a crazy no. story. Yep. Yeah, they tell that story like Paul Bunyan. Like, he was six foot nine. <laughs> yes. and he came in with eyes like you fire. Guys, that song. Do you remember Big John? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's like that song. Okay, now, uh, Greg Gagne told me this story, and then other people told me the story as well. They went, yeah, big deal. What do you need a big deal? They were on the tour with Andre the Giant. Yeah. 156 (laughs) beers. I don't know if it was in one day or he stayed up overnight to do a 156 beers. And when he got up to go upstairs to go to bed, he took some more with him. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, put put the whole case under his arm and walked away. That was like what he was going to drink before he went to bed. Yep. That's what they, yep, exactly right. You know, like ignoring the fact that it's alcohol. I would pee myself oh, yeah. in That's my funny. sleep immediately. Like, I drink a water bottle, and I'm like, we'll see if I make it. All right. Or if I go to, like, the bar, <laughs> if I go to the bar and drink, like, three beers, four beers, like, I'm going to the bathroom constantly. Like, I know. Alcohol makes you go to the bathroom. I, oh, God, I drink yes. 47. I, you'd spend half the time in the bathroom. Yeah. Which I did yeah. anyway. Yeah. So, you know, all How are you going to get in a fight? You're right. peeing all the time. <laughs> oh, I, got, I didn't get mad I got when a I feeling. I, got a, I, I think that the giant probably peed his bed and just didn't care. Probably true. Yeah. He that doesn't strike true. me as the type of guy who's like, oh, I got to get to the bathroom. He strikes me as the type of guy as, ah, I'm just going to pee in my bed. Right. And because nobody's making fun of him if they catch him. Oh, so uh, like, no. <laughs> they catch him. <laughs> so they oh, jump no. out. Okay. Mr. Gotcha. Giant, <laughs> sir, can I take this mattress to the garbage for you? Yeah. I love it. Judd, always wonderful. We will talk to you tomorrow. We'll see you uh, tomorrow as well. All right. Talk to y'all. Thanks a lot. Judd's all good. Ladies and gentlemen, score north. Taking care of business. And are we going to do a direct segue? We can. Oh, look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and talented. <laughs> God, what's his name again? Brad something? Yeah. Ah, yeah man, Blake. Blake's, whatever you want to call me, Tom. Look, um, you on hey, camera Brittany. for the first time in 40 years. Yeah, yes, look at this big head coming right <laughs> at you. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, uh, it's very clean. Look at that. Yeah, it is. Quite That's clean. Really the, yeah, the, it's, it's the Frasier Crane head, they tell me. Um <laughs> Just a quick, quick okay. note on the beer. Um, I, an Australian legend, David Boone, he's a cricketer. Uh, in 1989, he drank 52 cans of beer from flying from Sydney to London on an aeroplane. <laughs> and, um, and he won't speak about it. He keeps it, you know, uh, cricketers are kind of like like similar sport to baseball. and uh, and But he's, he doesn't talk about this amazing feat, but it's a legendary Australian story. I'm very impressed with you. You, you said you took down 47? 47, oh. yep. It was over that's, about a six-hour period, so it's really not that much. That's... that's, that's what? <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, Wait, gonna, well, it's only yeah, eight the, an hour. I mean, it's not yeah, that, that big a deal. <laughs> unbelievable. One I've every seven 20, minutes. I did 27 Coronas at um, <laughs> uh, tra- Travers Stakes Day in 2007. And I'd given up gambling for a couple of years. So I wasn't gambling. So when you don't have one vice, you pick up the other vice. Sure. And um, I got into a deep chat with a woman uh, who wanted to have plastic surgery. And oh, God. Um, it was oh, a big no. group of people. And I said, oh, oh, I no. said, 
Yeah, 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 yeah. I sh- <laughs> look, I would never do this to now, and it was from the corona. And I said to her, if you just lost 20 pounds, you wouldn't need to cut oh, your face. Oh, my, oh my God. God. <laughs> Sorry. It's a terrible thing I said, uh, Brittany, and that's why you shouldn't drink 27 coronas. Yeah. I don't didn't I didn't want to see him. She didn't. She had a beautiful face. She was a beautiful girl. She just needed. When compliments go girl. bad. They... Like, is yes, that it's funny? Just, like, it's yeah. not casual. Right, Four pounds, five pounds. No. 20, 20 pounds, pounds. is, uh, yeah. that's a big undertaking, yeah. my friend. Yeah. That's coming from an oaf like me, too. <laughs> an uh, oaf. Uh, smashing, yeah, Very uh, yeah. oaf-like. They, they, were just sho- they were just leaving a lime on the table, and I was just sucking that yeah. as I was smashing yeah. the corona. What's <laughs> <So that's> more <laughs> impressive than the 27 coronas is that you lived to tell this story right? after telling a woman she needed to lose 20 pounds. Do you know what's funny, yeah, too, it, is you know, yeah. and, I, you know, I'm not saying it's because it's a woman, but you know those kind of people who are fishing. Like, you know, if I just had this surgery, she's expecting you to say, no, you're gorgeous. Like, stay exactly the way you are. No, love, if you lost 20 pounds, (laughs) you'd be a knockout. My my critique is not with your face. It's with your stomach. The whole table turned. Like, the whole table just... No one knew what to do or where to look. Oh, that's so... Anyway, Funny. But I, I remember I walked out of Saratoga race course. It's beautiful up there in summer. It was a, a oh, this is this even gets better. After about my fourth Corona early in the day, uh, I ran into Bill Parcells. Uh, oh, Tom, you know? sure. so I had a bit of confidence. Four into me already. It's a hundred degree day. I am sweating. I'm wearing a suit, but my you know just sweat patches everywhere. And I walk up to Bill and I went, "How yeah? How would I go on your team back in the day?" And he looked me up and down. He goes, you wouldn't have even made it on my bench, young man. (laughs) 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 He he, he kind of just laughed at the mess I was and walked away. And I remember, uh, you know, after the 27th beer and the races had finished and you walk outside the race course and onto the next pub outside, I, uh, I, I, about a hundred yards away, uh, young guys were walking out with a big cooler and the cooler handle broke and it fell onto the ground. Oh. And beers started rolling along the street. I took off like it was a hundred yard dash. <laughs> I sprinted the best I'd ever sprinted. And in one foul swoop, I just went down with my hand and picked up one long can of beer and picked it up, opened it up and just smashed it. Oh, and uh, I love my, it. my friend said, I'd never seen you that agile, Brad. You were, you were, you were <laughs> unbelievably agile after drinking 27 beers. But anyway, that was my only great feat in drinking. Although I do love beer, but Tom, 47, incredible. And in the times I met you, though, you were drinking more red wine. Oh, yes. I, that I, was I a think. whole different deal. Yeah, whole yeah, different yeah, setup. Whole different deal. That's good. No question yeah, about um, it. I have to ask well, you I've a question. A, Yes, sir. Go, go. This is for all four of you, because you mentioned his name, and twice in my life, once in Florida and once here, somebody thought I was Bill Parcells. I don't think I look anything like Bill Parcells, do I? Yeah, you know, I guess a little. Now that you mention it, a little bit. I don't see it. No, Mm -hmm. I mean, like, maybe from a distance, but I think only if you're expecting to see Bill Parcells somewhere. Uh, Yeah, you would think, but I'm like... You demand yeah. respect. You demand... That's uh, what it is, you damn right. Yes. When I was running the Giants, I'd like to point out that... <laughs> yeah. No, that yeah. Actually, I get mistaken for a lot of people. I must have a very, like, middling face or something. I look like a lot of people, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, well uh, Tom, I, uh, uh, we haven't spoken since you kind of created this viral hit of mine. Like, you gave that... Jennifer Aniston, Adam Sandler thing, yeah. another life. Phenomenal. It's, it, it's yeah. everywhere. Is it's it so really? Because, Brad, I follow. I think I follow you on TikTok, and so I was on TikTok randomly, and I saw that video pop up, and I thought it was just your account, and I looked down. It what? wasn't your account, and what? then it happened again and again. again. That video is everywhere. Is it really? Yeah, I forgot Around to the tell world. you, Tom. Yes. Yeah, everywhere. Tom, I, I, it must have been maybe one of your listeners. Someone's clipped it off the off YouTube and just taken it and then posted it on TikTok. And it's two weeks ago now. And I woke up uh, two weeks ago on a Thursday morning and I had a load of texts from Australia. You know, they're ahead of the time zone. So, geez, you're, you're on the front page of Reddit. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, Reddit. And like, <laughs> Everywhere. And, and it's on the front page. And it, and it got like 200,000 upvotes on Jesus. Reddit, which an upvote is apparently a big thing, more than a like. And uh, it stayed on the front page of Reddit for the day. And by then it would just it just went, and and now two weeks later it's had I mean definitely well over ten million 
oh, yeah. uh, views. 10 million it's views. Yes. And so like the other day I saw it on one of my Instagram feeds. <laughs> Uh, like on one of like the big, uh, you know, it, it gives you all the like popular videos. You or whatever trending. And then it tagged Brad Blanks in it. And it was just so wild. So is your social media just going crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's gone. It went nuts. Like it was crazy. So two weeks, in that actual week, the two biggest videos in the world that week was my video of Jennifer Aniston and Adam Sandler. And uh, the Dalai Lama get his tongue sucked. Yeah. You know, um, oh, wait, that's uh, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What is this the video where she's like telling him to wear something nice or something or what? Oh no, this is where a different video? Jennifer he uh, Brad's kneeling interviewing uh, Jennifer Aniston and um, Adam Sandler and he, she's like, "You can stand up, you can stand up," and then he does, and they both go. To Adam goes, "Oh my god, because he's so tall," <laughs> and it's like fear in both their awful. faces. Oh yeah. my god! And then they're like, "No, get back!" To and then he was like, "That, that that's awful." Oh, that's awful. Yeah, yeah I scared oh, him, Tim. I scared the hell out of him. It was but, so uh, yeah. funny. But, yeah, there you go, Tom. Thank you. I don't, you know, it's like you, you were the only one talking about it three weeks ago. So well, you talk about it three weeks ago, then two weeks later. Um, but it's it's been madness. Yeah. I will tell you this: it's gonna. You just caused a huge problem for Bernie, the salesman, uh, director of sales at Hubbard, because I'm gonna be on the phone at 10:01 going. Uh, 20 million views? <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead and sell some commercials, bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we did our Bernie. part. <laughs> we, right. yeah, yeah, we did, did our part. part. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yo, um, uh, madness. Anyway, well, I've got some things, some interviews today that I don't think we'll get 10 million views. But, can we, can we um, take a quick, nice people. Can we take a quick break before you do yes, them? Yes, mate. We'll just yeah, take yeah, a very sure. quick yeah. break. Be right back with Brad Blanks, all 20 million people of them. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. I just uh, was sent something by one of our listeners that's hilarious. Uh, and for people who don't know this, you've never been in Minnesota. And this is not a derogatory statement, but in the state of Minnesota, to be Scandinavian is a very big deal. I am not Scandinavian. I think uh, Tevin is, but I'm not. Just like only like 80% Scandinavian. 80%. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Just, uh, but you, wouldn't you agree that to, to be yeah, from people, Scandinavia, people, it's a very big deal in Minnesota, people right? People are very excitable about oh, it. God. Like, really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. They have, yeah. like, like, like is, they, is that the one that has the those horses they put out front? Like, those, like... Which like, one? What are you talking about? They have, like, those, like, wooden horse things that they like to put out front and put in places. Yeah, I think you might be right about it that. It has, like, the design all <laughs> over it, like... Okay, a, so... I gave you some ammunition. I'm about to give you some ammunition for the next time you have to hear about how wonderful Scandinavia is because you live in Minnesota. Sweden launches research rocket and accidentally hits Norway. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh. You accidentally hit another country? That's a bit much to deal with. I thought I was bad with directions. Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, Brad Blank's with us. Uh, it's so great that your your picture is up. I can look right at you when you're talking. Yeah, yeah it's great. It's great. Fantastic. It's great, Tom. Yeah, um, yeah so I've got uh, a new show. There's a new show on Netflix called The Diplomat. Uh, some people love it. Uh, I, some people are a little bit cold on it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't mind it. It's like sort of a, it's got a bit more soap opera-ish, but it has that spy element that... Yeah, uh, it's about a woman that gets made ambassador to the United States based in uh, London. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a bit of action in the first couple of episodes, but it stars a great actress who I love from the show The Americans. Her name is Kerry Russell. She's phenomenal uh, in it. She yeah, is. she is phenomenal. And yep. uh, a top, top lady. And, of course, you know, uh, I don't know if this could be before your time, Brittany, um, you know, because I just know you're still a young lady, but can you remember her on Felicity? Yes, yeah, yes, and when she yes. cut her hair, it shook yes. the world. That's that's right. Yes, really good. good, good. Yes, Tom. There you go. We, we're talking hair, um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, I caught up with Kerry at the uh, red red carpet for this show, uh, The Diplomat, the other night. Yeah, he's well, why do we like her? Why, like I've seen the first two episodes. Why why is she a hero to me? Um, yeah. Well, it gets better and better. I have to say, right. by episode three. I really like her. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah, things get great. Things get wild. Yeah. She is really human. She's a mess. She's complicated. She's flustered constantly. Right. She's not great with people, <laughs> um, and it's nice to see that in people in these high-powered positions. Yeah, there's been a lot of people. Your co-stars have been talking about your hair in this, which I find. What do they say funny? about it? Well, I'm so the, curious. The, the big tall guy who's your right-hand man in the show yeah. said, "Oh, well, it's my job to brush her hair in this." <laughs> 
That's very funny. Well, I'm glad someone is. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Do you feel that that's what they have to do to help you? Yeah, they're that's, always kind that's of watching me like, oh, oh, God, is she going to make it? Right. And and everyone's like, I'm not sure. Right. Gotcha. But that's fun. fun. And I yeah. said, well, you've been known for your hair for 30 years. Sure. Why should it be any different? That's right. Why well, should it be? I'm glad Otto wants to take care of my hair. That's right. Beautiful hair. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Kerry Russell, thank you. Thank you. So the <laughs> diplomat. The diplomat. Yes. Woo. Very good. Good chick. Top top lady. Her <laughs> fellow was there, uh, Matthew Reese, who was the husband in The Americans. They they met on set in, in that show and got married and I think they had a kid. And he's a Welsh guy. And I reckon he could drink probably 22 beers, Tom, you know, in his 20, day. Of 22 is good. Up. Yeah. Yeah, he's good. Yeah, yeah, he's a, he's a, he's a, <laughs> seems to be a, a beer drinking Welsh rugby fan. Yeah, uh, but a, but a good actor as well. He's in that Perry Mason show. Oh yeah, that's just, yeah, uh, yeah. That's just back on HBO. But anyway, the Diplomat. I've enjoyed the first few episodes, but you know these streaming shows. You know, there's so many of them now. You know, you, you, we can't watch them all, but some are some are awesome. Some are all right. You know, um, what what are you watching right now, Tom? What's we- your by coincidence, two nights ago, Catherine and I watched the first episode of The Diplomat, and we thought, oh. it's unusual, but we liked yeah. it. We liked it. I know. I can't put my finger on it either. Right. Yeah, and I'm like, right. yeah, it's, this is all right. This is, you know, um, so I'll, I'll persevere, and, and you know, I posted the interview up on my Instagram of her and Kerry Russell, and people on it are like, oh, I love this show. This show is awesome. So, yeah, you're sort of doing a bit of a you know, straw poll there. So people right. seem to love it when they throw themselves into it. Now, the, uh, the, the next character... I, I have here is Justin Thoreau. You know, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Justin, well, he's the was the writer of uh, Tropic Thunder back in the day. That was how he made his claim to fame and then became the long-term boyfriend of, you know, the chick that I scared the crap out of, Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he's in uh, uh, the, the TV show that starts Monday night called The White House Plumbers, which is more of a comedic take on the group of guys who commit the Watergate crime. So you've got uh, Gordon Liddy, you know, uh, and I mean, you, you'd run, this is your wheelhouse, isn't it, Tom? You're a, you're a Watergate you know, guru. Uh, you, you studied Watergate? What the no? hell's wrong with you? <laughs> 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 yes, that's all I ever yes. do. <laughs> Which one, did, did Gordon Liddy, I think, became a radio host? Yes, he did. Absolutely he did. He did. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, Woody Harrelson's in it as well. And, and Woody Harrelson and Justin Thoreau's characters team up and pretty much are a duo in this, uh, uh, but they continually just screw it all up. And, and they have their Cuban, uh, their team of Cubans that help them do the burglary into the Watergate building. Um, but the first episode's very funny. It's from uh, the creator or the writer of the show is uh, David Mandel, who is a ex-Seinfeld writer and went on to work on Veep. He, he won a few Emmys for Best Comedy Writing. Anyway, uh, I caught up with Justin Thoreau at the red carpet the other evening. Justin Thoreau, how are you, mate? I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good mate. Oh, the excitement. Yeah, yeah. First. You, do you feel that? Yeah, we just, I think we knew we were making something good, you know, like, because it's always a good sign when, you know, cast and crew get to work and, and laugh a lot, you know, and, um, and we had such a great time making this, and we spent a, the majority of our time laughing our asses off you have to play it straight though don't you yeah you do i mean you kind of this is the kind of you know satire that you don't want to lean in and wink on or you know you have to play it dead straight and just let the words and the situations be funny you know and uh woody you and him going head to head i mean obviously friendship history there is that is that well we actually met on this project oh we met him we met him before i met him before when he was doing uh, live in front of a studio audience, and he played Archie Bunker. I uh, and so it was only on this that we really kind of bonded and, and hit. Is it there off. a bonding? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. We were all shooting upstate, and we all just had a fabulous time. You know, like, and so we were all sort of in this weird summer camp. Right. Funny to go to summer camp with Woody Harrelson. That would have oh been. That would have been fabulous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, I'd do it this summer if he's game. We should ask him if he push out McConaughey, and it just becomes you and yeah, Woody. No, I think I think McConaughey comes with the package. Comes unfortunately, the fellow, great to meet you, mate. Smooth Reagan? operator, that guy. Yeah. Oh, smooth. he is so yeah. attractive. Like, oh, you like him? Wow. Ooh, we, both me and my <laughs> husband think he is so... We watched Leftovers. 
And we both are like, yeah, we'd hit that. Wait a second, <laughs> though. Are you talking about Tevin, Rudy, or me? Oh, all, all of you guys in the studio, <laughs> for I sure. I don't fill out gray sweatpants like Justin Thoreau does. Oh, <laughs> yeah, does. maybe not. Maybe oh, not. he's so attractive. Oh, yeah, did I would you settle down. Did you feel that, Brad, when you were talking to him? Like, Sexist. Does he oh, does... He's well, he's, yeah, he's well structured, I yeah. guess. Yeah, he's got a good <laughs> hairline. I look at hairlines God. in men most of the That's time. That's your thing, your hairline yeah. guy? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you, you look at the things you'd love the most, you know, like, uh, you, <laughs> you know, um, yeah. but no, he was good. I reckon he's quite funny. He's quite good chat. He's upbeat. He's positive, positive sort of guy. So, yeah, they're good on you, Brittany. I reckon you and your husband and him would make a great trio. Thank you. We're working <laughs> on it. We have goals. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Unbelievable. All right, pal, when are you coming back again? Uh, yeah, no, we've got to work it out. I've got to, I've got to get there. I've got to come in like on a Monday and leave on a Thursday. Or do, I, you do one of those to. sort of missions. Yeah, you yeah. got to do yeah. it, and that way the missus can't get too angry at me. Yeah, because yeah, well, I it, tend to do do all my work on weekends. Yeah, that, yeah, that that's true. Business. Yeah, yeah. You know we'll take it care of it. Thanks, pal. Yeah, thanks, mate. All right, see you, buddy. Talk to you bye, later. bye, bye, Brad. Yeah, bye, 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 Brad Blanks, bye, 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 <laughs> You're going to have to shut his mic off because he'll never. <laughs> <laughs> I love him. I know. He's a wonderful guy. Have you ever met him in person? Yeah, I've hung out with him many times. Oh, that's true. Going to Vegas. When I was that. an intern, I was in charge of driving right. him to Treasure Island. And it was like the first time in my life where I was like, are you are you a toddler? He'd be like, oh, Brittany, look at that. Look at that bond. You know who lives there? I'm like, no. <laughs> look at that. That's so crazy. Everything. He's like amazed by everything. I feel like he's just always 100 miles an hour. Oh. Like there's no slowdown. And he loves everything. He knows my mom's name. He knows everything about you. He, and he'll be like, oh, how's Beverly doing? It's like crazy. Yeah. He like no, gets in your life. Like he's so lovely. Another one. I got very lucky. All you people came, came around. I I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. Oh, I should mention, by the way, uh, Kath and I last night watched a 15-year-old movie. I don't think there's a bigger Ricky Gervais fan on earth than me. I just love that guy. He's, he's just, so funny. He's very funny. He's got that attitude, which I love. Have you ever seen this movie Ghost Town from 2008? Uh, I haven't I seen it. So. I know. I've heard of it, though. You have heard yeah. of it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We thought it was terrific. Good. He is so incredibly good at what he does. It's, it's amazing. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, anybody who's ever on the fence about Ricky Gervais, just go watch the movie The Art of Lying, or The Invention of Lying. The Invention yeah. of Lying oh, yeah. is so funny. Also, great. his stand-up when he talks about different dog breeds, finding out what they have to do for their jobs is so funny. Like, it makes me cry laugh. Mm -hmm, right. All right, is that going to do it? Mm -hmm. Kevin will be with us on, of course, the family podcast coming up in one hour. Yep. Looking forward to it. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Thank you. Bye.